Red Pill Lions Podcast. We're back. I'm Kevin Savo. This is Rocky Savo. This is Mark Savo. That's Richie B. And put them up, fellas. We got Stevie Knight yes, from sir. Night Talk and the Stevie Knight channel here. Yes, Cheers, get fellas. Get it. Boys. Cheers. Good to be with Ooh. you. It has already been uh, a fun day just kicking it. Yep. And I'm wondering how many people watching this have a similar experience of knowing one channel but not the other because Rock unknowingly Dude. was hanging with you all day and used yeah. to watch your music react channel and it wasn't until halfway through the day that you were talking about your music react channel and rocks like i fucking watch yeah, this guy I, all the I time i've seen him and i was like he looks really familiar i'm like okay whatever just keep going and uh he's sitting <laughs> there going. he's like yeah you know so i got this reaction channel and i'm like you react mac miller and he's like yeah, yeah i've really. react mac miller he's nice <laughs> and then i looked at my my, my channel and I, i've commented on his videos i'm watching all of them i'm like oh shit i do know Fuck you a small world yeah. yeah small world so the stevie knight channel is your main gig and then night talk is something that's like two years old a year and a half old about a year and some change yeah i mean i wouldn't i i i, I a lot the same amount of energy into both at this point man I'm, i think i'm more passionate about the night talk at this point just because of the shit we tap into it's because it's a little more versatile yeah, everything you talk yeah. about is a little bit more yeah. current the material presents itself on a weekly basis yeah. and night talk is popping yeah. i mean the the subs aren't as yeah. much as on the stevie night channel but you just had an upload from like eight days ago just mm -hmm. hit a million kev yep. gave me some homework he said yo watch these videos <laughs> I, I i thought i was gonna sit there maybe watch one or two i had damn near watched like six seven videos i couldn't fucking get my eyes off the screen That's so i was thoroughly dope, entertained i appreciate that man well, let me tell you real quick. So that's how Rock found you. I'm going to tell you how I found you. Yeah. Now, I usually try to veer off of talking about race topics since I'm, I, I'm a white gentleman. But Chuck, oh, really? D, uh, you know, Chuck D is like one of my heroes. He's like one of my favorite rappers ever. I don't know how much of a public enemy guy you are, but I'm a huge public enemy Definitely fan. Definitely aware. And Chuck D shared the link to the trailer for that documentary i'm trying to remember what it was called it, it was something it was called something like because i know there's the show dear white people i never watched that but there was a documentary called everything's gonna be all white and chuck d and chuck d what? shared it and well it's this documentary where they basically just shit talk white people and they get a bunch of big guests to come in and oh, shit talk white it. people I gotta watch uh, it. Yeah. styles p i, I forget I, don't, I didn't see that at all no I'm, you reacted to it what's the name of it I, I think it's called everything's gonna be all white what was the first one you said though you said the one you said dear like, white people is uh i get them confused okay okay dear I, all right white i got you people, i got you but I got that's you, like I got a you. netflix yeah, yeah, show yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, and this day and age with the demonization of the straight white male, even if you were never racist, never been racist, never done nothing racist, just being the straight white male, you know not to say anything, even when you see something that sort of rubs you the wrong way. And so what we do is we look up content. We want to hear what black content creators have to say about this. Yeah. So that's exactly what I did. I'm like, I can't say anything about it. And, and I don't generally get like pissed off. Like, I can't believe they said this, but I'm watching this and I'm like, I just don't know what to make of it. And then it puts white people under the impression that maybe this is how most black folks feel about all white people. So you want to hear a black perspective. Yeah. So I searched up reactions. You come up and you had a pretty actually had a, a, a pushback against it. Yeah. that Like you thought it was bad for race. It's fucking racist. Yeah. You would call it racist. It was racist. I, from from the from the black people's opinion on those matters. It was definitely racist. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to demonize white people just straight up that's what it is that's what they're doing you know what i mean and black people are it seems like you know society allows that just because like the black struggle the, the trauma we have we're allowed to uh address these topics the way we can and white people are back against the wall they're not allowed to say anything in that mm -hmm. regard because you get labeled as racist mm -hmm. yeah and as conservative as i can be i'm not like the most pro white i can't believe they said this about this kind of cat well, i mean you can't really be that at speaking the, of racism too i watched the the video of what was that youtuber's name that the, the dude from the uk i forget his name he interviewed the dude of the from the leader of the cook Oh Bucks yeah, man. yeah. That was What's a good his video. name again? He trolled the he trolled the hell dude, out of him. Dude, that shit was so funny. He got he like you know like the names like uh what's like one of those play names like Bend Me Over or whatever like Bend shit Over. Like Bend Over and stuff. Yeah. So he had names like that, but he he got the he tricked the KKK leader into like, like shouting dick. out, shouting Sook out my BLM. My dick. <laughs> yeah, sook, sook my dick. Sook and then I dick. forget what the BLM was. BLM one. Uh, they was. portrayed that guy. I forgot his name, but they portrayed that guy, the leader of the clan, really well in uh, that Spike Lee movie. And I think Daryl Davis also has stories about him. But so Chuck D is my hero. So when yeah. Chuck D shared that and helped promote it, it kind of broke my heart a little bit because I'm watching it and I don't easily take offense to shit. I'm like, okay, like if we're in the era of demonizing white white folks, whatever. 
all you could do is be a good person and fuck what the world says. But Chuck D used to be the guy that says, like, fuck the system. And now he's sort of, as he's gotten older, become the guy that says fuck the right and fuck Republicans and fuck conservatives. But, like, the Democrats, the left, that's still the system. And that's what I don't understand. So when I watched that documentary piece, and, and I wanted to get your take on it to see if, if this is how do most people feel this way, do most black people feel this way, do most black commentators feel this way, or is it, like, radical black propaganda? Because there is a difference between that and a documentary about the history of racism. This wasn't quite it. You guys got to check it out for yourself. It wasn't quite a traditional documentary about the history of racism in America. It was pretty loud and obnoxious and like wild. And I'm not offended, but I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was ridiculous that Chuck shared it and that kind of broke my heart a little bit. And I just wanted to see what people made, made of it. And then I find your channel and your channel is just seeing the nonsense in calling it out. everything that's happening yeah. in general right now. I'll be curious about that as well, man, because you posed that question to me kind of last night as about where most black people sit in certain situations. And I would definitely be curious because I think my perspective at this point is a little different than your typical black person. But at this point in society, I don't know where t your typical black person sits on these stances. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know how all black folks felt about that documentary. I don't know if they liked it. I don't know if they're going to call me fucking Uncle Uncle Tom for my perspective on it. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like it was not as objective as, as non-biased you can get. Take color away. You look at that documentary, it's fucking racist. Yeah, it was it wasn't my wasn't my favorite. Some people can't take a step back and like just look at something for what it is. Yeah. They kind of always have the perspective like diluting down their opinion. So like And yeah. it put, it puts me I mean, not anymore. I could care, I could care less, but it's like if I don't identify with that, you know what I'm saying? If I don't identify with what they're trying to convey, if I don't identify with the the, you know, I'm black fucking the struggle type shit, then you know, I'm looked at as, you know, Oh, yeah. Well, I, I once got heat in the comment sections because I did a podcast with Donovan Sharp and I asked him about the black manosphere and people immediately were like, why is this white it's kid asking separate. about the yeah. why is he asking about the black manosphere? And, and I think I heard some if dad could not fucking call me during the everything important I do, that would be great. <laughs> um, they jumped all over me and they were like, I heard some passive uh, aggressive tone in that it's question. Bullshit. I was like, no, my question was, what's it like? from your end because Donovan's a black content creator mm -hmm. and he has an expectation to live up to that we don't. So the expect it, like I was saying to you, I was like, when it comes to talking about women, the red pill shit, we're, you know, we got a little Puerto Rican in us, but we're in America, we're white. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not Puerto Rican enough to be considered not white and we have zero expectation to uphold the image of the white woman. We don't like, we don't have any of that. Yeah, so there's yeah, a yeah. different expectation put on black content creators. So I, I, I asked Donovan that because I, I imagine that could come with some frustration. Are you going to be put in the Hodge twins box, the black conservative box, like the Larry Elder box. And I've like, never even thought serious. about that, bro. Like that's wild even fucking thinking about it. You just can't just call troops out. Can't call rally. I'll give opinions because they place you in different black boxes, bro. That's crazy. As they want to associate you with shit because yeah, it's easy man. to vilify when you're yeah. associated with something. Exactly. But tell me about your time on YouTube because it looks like you've had uh, a, a decently easy ride in terms how, of how'd avoiding. How'd you get your start? Yeah, avoiding controversy. The, the music shit, actually, the music shit popped off. You know, I, I thoroughly enjoy hip hop. And initially, I saw people out here doing reactions or like breaking down bars and shit. And I thought they did a shitty job. So I thought I could do it better. Mm. And then uh, it was a hobby, though. And then it blew up when I started rapping, uh, talking about Eminem and shit. And then um, I wanted to tap into shit that was just as important. All this societal shit is important and give my perspective on it. And that's turning, in, turning into what it's turning into now. And um, I. It's been a ride just because of the cancel culture and backlash of me being afraid to say things because it really puts a dent in your pocket. Now you got to walk on eggshells and, and uh, certain you topics any, now. You got any YouTube strikes? Uh, yeah, but they all got taken back. You know what I'm saying? Like they were they removed. I've talked about COVID at times. They removed shit and gave me a strike. Any red pill content that got striked? Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. Yeah. Yeah. Everything with Tate. Yeah. Andrew Tate. They've uh, they've taken videos down, but I appealed them said what the fuck basically and they put the shit back up <laughs> um but uh yeah it's, it's me directly for me saying what the fuck i'm saying i haven't really felt attacked maybe it may have seemed attacked from somebody else but i'm kind of used to what comes i think the manosphere in general is 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 like under attack as far as as just mainly youtube right now well, youtube so facebook strict, instagram dude. Or meta now, whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, I have this question for you. Have you been able to, and it seems like you have, uh, like avoid controversy? It looks like you just make your content 
and some people in the comment sections will talk their shit. Yeah. But because you don't exactly have a label, you will delve in whatever topic you find nonsense in Facts. and try to show the truth in that topic matter. Yeah. Yeah. But you Sorry. don't. <laughs> it's cool. But you don't necessarily align with red pill conservative. Yet we all get thrown in that box whenever we speak truth. Exactly. So when we start to speak harsh truths, people have to group you into a box. So they look at it and they're like, Stevie Knight, I've heard these opinions. They so may, they may think he red pill, black conservative, you name it. Uh, but it doesn't look like you've had to face much of that. No. Nah. Pretty much, right? You nah, kind of get left like alone, the, you make your the, shit. Like the, you telling me this situation, just like, like this scenario I'm in is, is really... Make, making me think about like me getting placed in these boxes just because I'm pretty much just calling out bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I've never really like thought thought about that dilemma. And thinking about it now, I realize it's a fucking issue. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. uh, but nah, not me personally, bro. Like the only backlash or only fucking pushback I get is from the tech companies themselves when I feel afraid to address certain topics because they gonna I'm going against their narrative, right? But um, nah, not really. And I. I, I that serves me as a in, in a good way because I don't follow just one niche. Like I could I could easily go red pill and just focus on that all the goddamn time. But I want to be pigeonholed in that in that certain area. You know what I'm saying? So when you first got into the manosphere of red pill, how how did that how did that transpire? I mean, I didn't even realize I was going red pill. I just saw shit that was appealing to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Resonated. when they calling out all this bullshit about the female to male dynamic and you know exposing truths, harsh realities, ugly truths and shit like this. This shit is all facts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then if, if it appealed to me and I felt like a more of a voice needed to be heard, I, I had a voice at that time so I could goddamn use my voice to 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 make the situation, you know, more loud. But the the male empowerment shit is what I really focus on. That that's that's dear to my heart. You know what I'm saying? Too. And that's what gets misconstrued because it, it's it's male empowerment, but these females take it as being misogynistic yeah. and like one sided. Yeah, yeah, but I I've come to realize, dog, like, you know, the the toxic shit making bitches feel like shit that gets the views. But um like I try to deliver the fucking hard truths in a digestible way for women to hear. Because mm -hmm. if you deliver it the wrong way, they're going to cut off and not hear anything you fucking saying. Of course. Out the other you point. know what I'm saying? So I, I I try to deliver it that way where you can actually re fucking receive it and realize what the hell is going on. But I try, I really come to the point now, like, reality does, reality, reality does not matter anymore. It doesn't fucking matter anymore, bro. Just Hop like, in whenever you want, by the way, Rich. You got you to gotta bob and weave. Reality, right. reality does not matter listen. anymore anymore. Speaking I, I of the mic. Question. So you doing the hip-hop and red pill thing. Do you feel like hip hop is a red pill genre of music? Mm. A certain lanes of hip hop are red pill as fuck. Hip hop is broad as fuck now. You got whack ass hip hop, soft ass hip hop, fucking, mm -hmm. you know, poppy hip hop. But, you know, you got the fucking misogynistic goddamn calling shit out. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't really classify it as a red pill, though. You, you know what I said when I went on Rolo Tomasi's show? I was telling him, he's a heavy metal guy, and I was like, as a, a, an older white dude that's into heavy metal like my dad, I said, I know you wouldn't appreciate hip-hop. I said, but doing what you do, hip-hop is, is basically the only music genre that openly calls out hypergamy. Yeah. Because I think AMS quoted Tupac, this quote I'd never heard before AMS said it, and he said, Tupac even said, I'm in the club one day, no chick will look at me. I signed my deal, now every bitch wants me. And AMS put something in perspective I never thought of. I never thought of. He said, you know when rappers call women bitches and hoes, it's not because they're misogynists, it's because they had the first-hand experience of a woman never looking their way the whole time they were broke, hustling, trying to make their demos, then they pop and they get the first-hand experience of now every bitch that never looked your way wants you because you course. have clout and money and status. Facts. Yep. So when a rapper says... Bitches ain't shit. It comes from a more authentic place exactly. than, than some incel that's angry that he can't get a bitch yeah. saying women are bitches and hoes on the internet. I definitely agree, bro. So, you know, I think that they're, they they kind of correlate. But I also think comedy and rap are the two places percent where the two say. places where an honest conversation about men and women can take place without the emotions because you lower your defenses when you're vibing a hip hop and you lower your defenses when you go to the comedy show. But now we're sitting down having a serious talk. Now people get it. But do, but do you think during the music and comedy, the shit they're talking about actually sits with the listeners though? You think they're digesting it to, to hell? Yeah. Look I at, think look so. At, look Not at, as much in comedy though. No, I feel I, like no, with no, comedy no. way no, more. No, no, no. no, how many Chris rock bits were rebranded on motivational pages yeah. as not a humorous bit, but that one point the, where you, 
the one point of him saying like there's only two things that are love unconventionally or unconditionally, unconditionally. is uh, uh women and children. yeah women and uh and children there were, I think it was dogs too right dude Chris Rock like that. changed my life oh yeah this is what I mean like it's, I know it sounds funny but there's certain points of inspiration that come from unlikely places I always tell him that the moment I became a man was when I realized that nobody gives a fuck about me mm-hmm. and but I give a fuck about me and I can count on myself but I can't count on anybody else and I had Chris Rock cycling through my head that bit where he's like I got to get my kids ready for the world and I wake up with them every day and I say before you leave the house I want you to know no, nobody gives a fuck about mm-hmm. you and you know that's it, valid though I definitely see the the connection with comedy not so much in music though I don't think that music has ever put me in a spot where I'm like becoming more aware of like the shithole that we're in as far as red pill, male and like shit that men need to hear to make them feel. Not with learning a message, yeah. just with talking about it. In other words, what I mean is uh, we sit down and have a conversation about female nature right oh. now. Women are going to be mad. But a girl will listen to a misogynistic record and shake her ass to it and have a great time and love it and want to fuck the, mu- the music artist that made it. Yeah. And then now simple, simple truths about the difference between men and women. Serious sit down discussion with Rolo Tomasi. Women are going to be mad. But the comedian points out generalizations about women, generalizations about men. Everyone's defenses are down. So even the girls are laughing. Yeah. The- with, with music, you got to like listen for it because they're not going to make a whole song discussing that like a certain topic or a certain thing they want to speak about. It'll be a bar that's really dope that slipped in that if you're if you're not listening, you'll miss it. Like one of my favorite ones is J. Cole. He said, uh, if people put half into what they put into chasing ass into a craft by now, you'd be famous and rich. Yeah, that's 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 some I like what he put in his video. Um, he was talking about and we're not going to touch too much on the topic because he's canceled. But he was talking about Tate mm-hmm. and um, he was they, they're saying that they canceled Tate because like it, he is uh, impressionable on the youth and stuff. And, and he's sending out a bad message. And then you just cut to the clip. Of uh, Cardi. Cardi B, I think it was a VMA performance <laughs> or yeah, something like bro. that with a Megan Thee Stallion performing a uh, WAP, and uh, they, dude, like soldiers, these women were like uh, chanting it, like yeah, soldiers, bro. like it was a, like a war like cry, an army, dude, like three hundred. It, it was insane, man. Yeah, but it's bro. like you're gonna cancel somebody, but like Tate, but you're gonna let Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion talk about their wet ass pussy and 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 influence the youth. Yeah, well, I think the music. They're, they're not held accountable in music. Because so they get away yeah, with they it. Get with it like, they're listening to it. But when you when you actually let them, you have a conversation with them and tell them about themselves, they get defensive and shit. So they're not really being honest listening to the music. You know what I'm saying? But That's why I think the music is a little bit more, I don't know, for lack of better terms, dangerous is because like it's almost like uh, like I never really fucked with the Pledge of Allegiance in school because every time we would be doing it, like growing up, I'd be like, this feels like some brainwashy shit. Well, when you listen to music and you're constantly repeating and singing the song back, that really drills into your no, brain yeah, that's, of that's like that's a like perspective. World. Juice World died of an overdose. He grew up on Future and all these other artists and stuff. The drug user music. That, yeah, we're talking about lean and the syrup and mm-hmm. shit. And I don't mean to sound like one of those old white people, like these rappers talking about their 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 drugs and all this, this gun <laughs> violence and stuff. But but it's true. Like it, and he got into it, and then he started blowing up, and then he started making music, and then he started doing the stuff that he heard about his his favorite artists doing in their songs, and then he died. So. Yeah. It's a shame. Definitely no. brainwashes. A lot, of, a, fact. a lot of you, people form a, an entire identity around like like their music. Like we know a couple of people that like their whole life is like I like hard. As rap, far so as that's female artists act. though, do you think there'll ever be a time where these female artists will be held accountable for the things they put into their music? Absolutely not. Yeah. I, agree. I think they're all gonna have a What about uh, male artists? Do you they think are. they'll be held or, or they, they are. already are? They are. Yeah. Not so much on the misogynistic front, like when a rapper calls a, a woman a bitch. That that's all fair game now. A, it's black that's culture, and then B, it's under the confines of art, so it's different than a conversation. Nah, but the same thing we were talking about earlier with the fucking Celtics coach, like fucking some chick that works for the staff or the or the team, like. Little things when it happens with men will be more villainized than when it's with women. So I guarantee it's the feminist movement. So like with music, if there's a bar that's a little bit too on the edge, it'll it'll make headlines, especially if it's with a male. Hey, real quick. I told you guys I was nervous about drinking on the podcast because I like to be like clear minded when I talk on the podcast. It's the first time I've drank and recorded and I'm already slipping. I wanted to make a point about Lizzo and I had to sit here and Google her name because I forgot her name. I was about to interrupt you guys and say, who's that fat girl that's always (laughs) making trouble? Hey, fuck it, bro. No, I wanted to be like, who's that fat girl that's always making trouble? Everyone's always upset about <laughs> She's her. She's not um, fat. Let's get a let's get She's a beautiful. Uh, <laughs> let's get a, a live Stevie Knight reaction since you do reactions. Lizzo accepting an award on television, saying that she's oppressed. 
Did you see that one? Yeah, I did a reaction on that shit. Let, let me hear your thoughts in person. It's a bunch of bullshit, man. Playing the victim card, bro. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? What? Oprah should not be coming out of anybody's mouth that has the fucking financial status that she has in the first place. But this is all just this victim mentality, bro. Like, and I was kind of confused, too. Like, you, are you talking about you're oppressed because you black? Because she was talking about, she 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 gets most of her flack for being big. Mm -hmm. It's never really a race thing. So now she's, now she's combining oppressed and are you trying to say women are oppressed? I'm trying to say black people are oppressed? You're trying to say you're oppressed because you're, you're fat? I didn't understand what it was. Kind of hits on all three. Yeah, right. but like, to me, all, all, of, all of it was a bunch of bullshit. What do you think the reaction would be if a man got up there and said that? They'd call him a pussy. They'd be like, he's a bitch. Well, well, well it depends. A white guy or a black guy? Mm. I think either, Mixed. I, I think either way. You saw, <laughs> let's like, well, let's the, throw it, it in the it, middle. It's, it's multi-leveled because liberals in media, like, all actors, all Hollywood people are all liberals. That's, that's I hate politics, dude. No, right? No, but I'm just saying, like their their social views are liberal, and they're crazy people because basically they own the world. They have the world by the balls. Like if you're one of the most famous, highly paid actors in the world, you make a career being somebody other than you. You're a, a method actor. You're a method performer, and then you adapt the liberal philosophy of the culture of your business. Mm -hmm. And they become crazy because then they start walking around talking about like we're going to change the world and we're going to push back against harmful social narratives. And it's like you haven't lived in the world since you made it, since you got yeah. your deal. You haven't known what the fuck was going on out here. But um, I can't stand Lizzo, bro. I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> I'll say this one thing about the, the whole victim mindset uh, oppression thing. Police brutality is different than the general idea that's that's put out there a lot of times that you have to understand certain people aren't going to make it in this world because of their skin color, their gender, because of their sexual orientation, because it's harder for them. Or even Joe Rogan will talk about how not everybody starts at the same advantage point. Yeah. And I understand all of that. But at the same time, sometimes white people don't understand this, not because they're ignorant, but out of pure, innocent naivete. And what I mean by that is you got to forget sometimes, or you got to remember sometimes rather, that we grew up having black heroes who are infinitely more successful than us. Mm -hmm. And just about every guest we've had on the podcast now is a black man that is so successful. I'm sitting across from him saying like, how do I get like you? So then when people talk about like, you know, it's not as easy for black folks to like get where they're like, you're at more of an advantage than they are because you're white. And I'm like, I'm still in the flop house and I'm wondering how I can get like these black content creators. They're rich. So it's almost like, a, an innocent naivete kind of thing when we don't understand this notion. You know what I mean? I'm trying to connect it to the the content creation aspect of it though because Well, some of them became yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. some of them became rich through yeah, content yeah, creation yeah, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. they got the real estate and yeah, now they yeah, got yeah, 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 or yeah. or vice versa. They they had already gotten rich with real estate owning a business, then they and decided they go to go content. into YouTube documenting yeah. it. Yeah. But I'm basically under the idea that anybody, no matter who you are, no matter where you start, can get where you want to get. Because, Absolutely. Because the victim the, the victim mind state holds everybody back in society's brain brainwashing motherfuckers to have this victim mind state, bro. Like you can be from the slums. You can be <laughs> for, for literally a shithole, bro. And then you ha there's going to be obstacles for you, granted. You know what I'm saying? But there's nothing holding you back. Just There's nothing that I can't do that you can't do because I'm black. Well, clearly. You know what I'm saying? Right, but clearly. like, But I mean... Society doesn't want us. Society, society doesn't want motherfuckers to, to know that. They want us to believe. They don't want us to believe that. You know what I mean? They want you to. They want. To, they want to keep you in this. Anything to demotivate you. Facts, bro. Anything. Facts, dog. They want to fucking pull the table from, from up under you, man. Yeah. You gotta yeah. put the mic yeah, up to your talk mouth, to Richie. Talk into the mic, Rich. Because you yeah, don't have your headphones, Justin, you can't hear it. up to you. Go ahead. What is that? It's like everyone thinks they're old, son. That's all. I yeah. Say. Pretty, pretty, yeah, I pretty much. And I know that this would sound like the harshative. <laughs> Y'all got me drunk. Y'all got me drunk. <laughs> I know this sounds. I know this Down sounds like Marco. the harshest, ignorant, conservative point of view, but it's not. It's it's just an innocent look at if you tell me that someone can't make it in life because they're black, and then we go down the list the of, of if we go down the list it's of the overwhelmingly successful black men, what do we say then? If you say you can't make it somewhere because you're a woman, then we go down the list of successful women. If you say you can't make it somewhere because you're gay, we go down the list of overwhelmingly successful gay people. Just, do people get tired of all this like bullshit fake talk? Like of just yeah. all like there's an opinion on this, there's an opinion on that. So either go out and get what the fuck you want, or don't and fucking sit on your ass and do nothing and say it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this. Like it's it's, it's and, so annoying. But being in a victim mind state is comfortable, bro. You know what I mean? Like you get complacent. Most people are victims. And then it's, it's not sheep, their fault. It's sheep mentality. Yeah. It's her mentality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It takes a motherfucker to go out there. 
and break this fucking mind state to actually make a change and put yourself in a certain different situation. So go out here and do something different. Go against the grain. The grain being victim mentality. That's 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 hard for most motherfuckers to do because mm-hmm. your mom your mom telling you how the world is. Your pop telling you how the world is. You're a victim. You're oppressed. The the, the 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 you black. You can't do shit. The white man is against you. Bro, that's a lot of fucking bullshit going on. And to to break that generations of fucking like. Of, of submersion and just how they want you to see the world. It's, it's a lot to fucking deal with. So I get it. I yeah. get it. So I'm I'm basically just challenging someone's entire perspective. Like the way you see the world is is it's really not it. And and then now I'm black saying that to a black person now. Like you just you just uh you just whatever they call me, a fucking traitor. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like a house nigga or a fucking Uncle Tom <laughs> or whatever the fuck, but it's real shit, dog. Like yeah, but I think a Uncle Tom is like the harsh, harsh conservative. I, that's in my, from my perspective. And Uncle Tom is like it, not only a free thinker or someone that doesn't think like everyone else who looks like them. It's the harsh, harsh conservative end of it, it's right? Just like the, like a Larry Elder. I've only listened to a little of him, but he is like a harsh conservative, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like a little bit different, right? Mm, I would think, yeah. or like a Jesse Lee Peterson is like a harsh, harsh old school conservative. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I'm I'm so, I'm talking more along the lines of you just going against the 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 the, the victim mentality, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying. It's kind of like religion too, man. It's like if you see the world this way, and I'm 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 challenging your religion, they're gonna come up with the most disrespectful shit trying to take me down. And yep. Uncle Tom is something really dis- disrespectful, disrespectful to say to a black person, mm-hmm. like you ain't black because yeah. I see the world this the I see the world the way I see the world. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's like disrespectful as shit. But I'm really trying to help you. Yeah, you know what I mean, if you would get out your own way, I'm really trying to help you. But nah, I'm black. I can't do shit. Like, bro, like, what is it that you can't do? Like, how often do you run into racism every fucking day? Like, how often do you feel less damn because of the color of your skin? Well, I, I was actually asking somebody the other day. It might have been BOA. I was asking him because I was telling you how unworldly I am. Mm-hmm. I, I just went to Florida for the first time ever mm-hmm. this year. I've not been many places in my life. And I was just asking BOA the other day. I was like, where does the the old school real racism where you're bothered in the street, like, where does that still happen? Is it... In the, the south, the rural, the rural communities the of the rural south, south yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Where, so, where was the leader of the uh, the Ku Klux Klan living? Where was that? In the Ozarks. The Ozarks. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Where's right. the Ozarks? I think it's in Missouri. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was on the yeah. show, Be, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, because we have two ty- We have two types of racism. We have two types of misogyny. We have two types of sexism. We have two types of homophobia. It's the politically correct version of that where you said something that just hits the ear wrong and now you're deemed a misogynist, racist, or sexist. And which, then is, you, which, and, which is irrelevant. And then cares? you have the real shit. The worst? So I was wondering where the real, real shit still goes We on. saw like, the, the real shit when we lived in, North, we were Carolina, in North Carolina. Dude, there were some not... really fucked up racist people down there, dude. Like really fucked up racist people. Well, it, it's it's crazy because like, like I said before, I was talking before the podcast these uh, content creators, influencers. Now, what does it mean to really be an influencer? Is you 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 have something that you you influence Dude, your your crowd facts. or your your fan base from, and people don't take that word serious enough. But a lot of these content creators go so mainstream that they can't talk about these type of topics with their fan base because they're so scared of being canceled. Because that's the new politically correct. It's just whatever won't get you canceled. That's why I kind of hate the word that's like so corresponded with like Instagram is like, oh, if you, if you want to subscribe to someone on Instagram, it's a follower. So like that sheep mentality, well, it's everyone's just, like if just they a talk follower. about it, they, they get judged as being racist, misogynist, Whatever you want to, whatever name you want to place on it, it it's, it gets a bad look just if you touch on the topic and you're not even saying anything derogatory yeah. or negative like, towards like he another was saying, party. Like he was saying, you just can't call out bullshit anymore. So like people can't comprehend that. Like let's take abortion for example. That like you can have the perspective of like yeah, I think pro-choice is a thing, and I also think pro-life is a thing. But people will want to like vilify your perspective and be like, oh, that means we're going to put him in this box. If he's pro-choice, that means he's this, 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 and this. They don't want you to be able to just, like, bullshit and just talk about it. Well, I don't know how you feel about that, but that whole thing, what I realized with Roe v. Wade was that they don't just want us to believe in a woman's right to choose. They want us to love and celebrate the idea of abortions. And that's what's crazy, because I've always said abortions are fucking horrible, Mm -hmm. but I believe in every woman's right to choose. And that's still not good enough, because the crazies want me to act actually say i think abo- abortions are dope i think they're trendy i think they're no it's fucking horrible but i believe in your right to choose Dude. why the fuck isn't that good enough when did they, you did you, did you stay out of all that when that was no, happening I tapped into the abortion shit and my thing uh i know why women get sensitive on it because they feel like it's their right 
my body, my right, my right, my choice, whatever, bro. But to me, you don't have the right to abortion. Right? That's a service provided. Like, yeah, you don't have the right to get breast augmentation. That's a service provided. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to, if you did this, you have the right to do what you want to do to your body, and then all of a sudden, government takes that option away from you, you can still do what you want to do to get rid of the baby, mm -hmm. but you can't rely on the government to do it because yeah. it's not their responsibility. Like, to me, it's just like a fail safe for women to fucking be irresponsible because the majority of pregnancies occur, we've had, you've, heard, you've heard this shit before, the majority of pregnancies occur from women being not responsible, yeah. right? It's, it's the chances of them dying from it or the baby being in trouble, that's, we're not talk, that's a minority of situations. The majority of it is just feminist shit where women can do what the fuck they want with their body and it's a fail safe. Some well, people, feminists would argue that it takes two to tango. Yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. But at the end of the day, the baby's in your body. So what you going to do now? Yeah, true. You know what I mean? I'm, I guarantee you if, if, if the roles are reversed and, and men, you know, felt the, br the brunt of it, like they had to carry a baby or some shit, had to do something to their body. They wouldn't have no fucking problem or like addressing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, like I like to me at the end of the day, women can do what the fuck they want with their body, but to get mad at the government and I I get it I get it like why 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 does government care why why do y'all give a fuck I understand that, but the, at the end of the day, bro, like it's whatever the regulation is in the, in that part of the the country that you live in you have to go through you have to realize this when you do what you do with your body, right? I guarantee to you ninety eight percent of the women out here that got pregnant knew there was a possibility of them getting pregnant, and they knew abortions available for them to get that get rid of that baby take abortion away. Are these women still gonna get pregnant? Mm -hmm. I bet you they're gonna move a little different because pregnancy or abortion's off the table now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. figure it out. Hey, did you ever think to yourself, hey, if I just stay with the music reactions, I'll never get heat from anybody? Was that was that something you had to take into consideration when you wanted to become outspoken on some of these matters and say, if I stay with the music shit, no one's coming for my throat, but now I start to speak my mind and that's gonna be trouble. I feel empowered by motherfuckers coming from my throat though, because that means I'm really doing something. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? Like if people are feeling some type of way about me talking about my observation, my perspective, and my truth, and you get mad about it, then you know, um, I'm doing something right. I'm not society's so fucking soft, there's a gender here, agenda there, agenda here, agenda there. If you don't go with it, you you the fucking worst thing in the goddamn world. And I ain't got time for that shit, bro. I struggle with that shit a lot, man. Like, if I address this shit, how, how's my fucking following gonna feel about it or whatever, man? But I'm at the point where you fuck with me, you fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that if you if, if we can't even have a conversation and disagreements or whatever the fuck, there's no, that's 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 the big problem to me. Like, yeah. we can't even, you have an opposing uh, position on something I do too. We can't have a fucking a discussion about it. You get mad and came and had a conversation, you fuck him now, right? Because, like, that's, that's where we are right now. It's, it's, it's fucked up, man. And um, I'm not going to allow that to dictate, you know, how I feel about certain things. I'm not out here to hurt nobody. I'm out here to fucking actually help people. You know what I'm saying? Bring, give people other confidence to fucking speak on matters that they may not feel confident on because they're worried about public public response. Scrutiny. Public perspective Yo, that's literally shit. just what I told you. That's yeah. literally why I found you in the first place because I was like, this is something that I don't really have the liberty to say my piece on. So let me see, let me see if someone else said it for me or put that idea out there for me. Let me see if somebody who doesn't look like me put that 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 idea out there for me so it, it goes down a little smoother. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it ties back to these influencers getting boxed in, man. I wish we could make it like the social norm again to rumble, not, young I was about man. To say, rumble. That's what I'm so I, I, <laughs> rumble, that's, young let's man. Into rumble. That, uh, all these content creators, the YouTube guidelines and guidelines on every platform are just getting more and more strict and they're slowly and slowly taken away our freedom of speech but they have this opposing competitive platform that's competing with youtube and youtube what what, what did anybody know what year youtube was founded in 2005 what, 2000, 2005 yeah. right? it ain't even that long bro that's not even a long time dude just wait till they start censoring like language and they start bleeping out shit so hey so how you coming. doing with rumble like uh, that, this are you on rumble yeah i'm on, he, I'm he on it but it's 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 slow it's slow Th that's it's what i want to know that's kind of youtube the thing. runs the world bro like you gotta have i mean I don't know what it would take to get Rumble I think to, I do. to compete. You got to have all these motherfuckers that know what's up, that have clout and power to fucking all get together and create the Avengers to take YouTube. They got to you know innovate, though, too. There's got to be something that's like that sets them aside from YouTube, not only the free speech part, but something that's like new. Well, I mean, Andrew yeah. Tate was a perfect storm, though, bro. Like yep. he 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 was required to fucking bring attention to that fucking platform. Mm -hmm. and, and his just situation just speaks volumes where we are right now, man. And, and uh. I, 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 but I don't like to, to compete with YouTube. I think it's it's slowly, and Tate. Well, I don't even want to say his full name. So I'm scared this video will get flagged. <laughs> 
But um, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I got even. <laughs> they say took that. his shit down, so he knows. But um, got to back up though. I, I I'm hoping that you know Tate and, and a few of these. I know uh, Sneeko is Sneeko or Sneeko. Sneeko, yeah. Sneeko. Uh, there's a lot of uh, content creators moving over to Rumble. But my hopes are for Rumble is that it slows down the restrictions on YouTube guidelines a little bit in the sense that they're like, okay, they're if like, I well, cancel this other content creator, if I cancel like a handful of other content creators, their next option is to move over to Rumble. So maybe yeah. it will slow down that a little bit as far as cancellation on that platform. Dude, it's like freedom. It's like refugees for freedom of speech. They're I like, don't I think it'll slow down though, just because there's so many fucking content creators that have yeah. so much fucking impact, so much money, bro. Like you get rid, you get rid of all the red pill. YouTube ain't slowing down. Nope. You know what I'm saying? It's a you machine. Get, yeah. And then like with the feminist movement is real. Like that feminist movement is like you know f like fat empowerment, like fucking you know, fat shaming, slut shaming, like all all that shit runs everything. Because they're the you know number saying? one consumer base. Yeah, they spend the all the are, fucking money. They're the number one consumer base. Real shit, dog. So, like, you can, YouTube can literally wipe out everything that they don't fucking like. You know so, what you, you don't think there's no possibility for Rumble giving YouTube a chance to. to I don't think Rumble will ever get to the. I don't know what would to take give them a run for their money. Like, at least you get. I, I don't know. I see it as a stock, though. I see it as, like, if I don't get on it now, at least just, like... But here's my other question. I want to get on it now, and, they, and, and I, I was on Rumble. I made my my channel. I, I didn't post anything yet, mm -hmm. but they have this option to sync your YouTube videos yeah. to their platform. And I'm, like, questioning this. I'm, like, am I going to get my channel deleted if I do no. this? Like, is YouTube going to find out? No. Like, how does, how does a competitive platform allow you... To like sync your videos from their competitor, like I don't know, that just makes no sense to me. Well, what, it makes me a little nervous. You, you can upload like your YouTube videos to like your actual website. So what's what's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah, yeah true. Well, true. what what I'm thinking is at the moment I'm thinking small time content creators or let's say guys that are like under a million subs. I don't know how beneficial it is for them at this moment in time, but what could be beneficial for Rumble is the more big names get canceled, it's the like more they're from getting Rumble's, free layups. From Rumble's perspective, it could be like keep canceling them, motherfucker, yeah. keep going because they come right over to us. Yeah, and that's yeah. the opportunity with Rumble is because you guys know just like I do that, like if you get on a platform early, the huge advantage. Look at the people that were on TikTok early, early yeah. YouTube, yeah. all of that. So like. It is kind of like a stock, like Mark's saying. If you hop in early, you can have generational wealth from I this I think it would be good for the for the creators, but I just don't think they'll ever be able to compete with YouTube. Here's what I was, well, hold up. Let me just say this. Here's the bad thing about it as it stands right now. As it stands right now, unfortunately, it seems like it's only branding, and the only reason you're bringing it up the way you're bringing it up is, is right now it's YouTube jail. So you, you go to yeah. YouTube jail, you go there. Not because it was a great move, but because this was your only other place to go because they canceled your ass. Their biggest thing right now is just being like the plan B, the backup. There's going to be other business opportunities, and Spotify is already doing video. I'm pretty sure Spotify is going to go more into video soon, too. That kind of weird thing to they be kinda, talking on the platform that we're on. Spotify kind of soft, too, though, right? They're, 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 I guess they're not soft enough for Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan has kind of like curved his speech even on Spotify. Like the shit he used to talk about like on early YouTube compared to like what he's doing on Spotify now, it's all... And he's also so massive too. So like that's another thing too. It's one thing to to have YouTube kind of villainize what you're saying, but when you get to a certain like subscriber count, viewer count, your audience will do that to you as well. Yeah. Depending on what you say, because when you have so many eyes on you, it's going to get to a point where like a lot more people can give their perspective. Well, hey, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, we have a couple holders questions, Rock. I think so. Let me we have up. a couple questions from holders. Tap that in on your phone. But I wanted to ask you this: You think we need more people to, uh, these days that are apolitical, meaning more people these days that just don't give a fuck about politics? Absolutely. I think it's about time for that to come back because when we were growing up, I remember politics was something you could take interest in or leave it alone and be a kid, an early teenager, a late teenager, an early adult, and just decide not to tap into that world, A, because it's boring, B, because it's mainly something that like only the authority figures, like your parents in your life give a shit about, and your teachers give a shit about it, but like you still wanna be a kid and, and do young, ignorant kid shit. But nowadays, I'm starting to realize that they brainwashed the youth into being so politically engaged Facts. that now everybody's fighting, and the more I think about it, the more I think, like, we weren't all fighting about this shit back when we didn't give a fuck about it because there was nothing more boring than George Bush debating John Kerry. Nobody gave a fuck, but they garnered the the young person attention through polarizing political characters like Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Then it became a fucking reality and they, show. And they've also tr tried to, like, attach 
everything to politics aren't important to you. Like to not give a fuck about politics is to not give a fuck about, you know, uh, unisex bathrooms. You know what I mean? Fuck politics, but I don't want my fucking daughter in the bathroom with a little boy, but that's political, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know I, got a, I got a quote for you. Uh, the actress, Jennifer, Lo- uh, Jennifer Lawrence... Can we guys? Can we go out drinking after the podcast so we can drink when I don't have to be, be <laughs> articulate? Can we Jennifer do that? Lawrence. Hey, do you want to do that? Hey, let's do it. Yeah, cool. I'll call yeah. a bitch. Anyways, um, are we living, Jennifer? <laughs> Y'all got me so fucked up. On this <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence. Take another hey, 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 that shit tastes good though, don't it? <laughs> like that? Yo, it's it does. Maybe it's because I don't need a chaser for this one. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just down like it. water. I was about to read the wrong fucking note. I'm on my second cup already. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and you still talk pretty good. God damn, bro. Yeah. I'm not a professional. Okay. I got a trainee or something. I, I don't drink often. 2.0. Okay, I got a quote for you uh, by Jennifer Lawrence. Everyone must be political. We need more people that are political. I no longer fuck with people that aren't political because like, the fuck world you, Jennifer calls Lawrence. for it. I don't fuck touch you. on politics. I'll let you guys take this one. <laughs> I'm just so over the politics, man. It's I just, just hate being associated with shit. Like, oh, you're a left, you're a right. Is, like, shut the fuck up. Why does everything need to be that goddamn serious? Like, yeah, literally. But these platforms get so big to the point where, like, they can spread misinformation and stuff. So that's where, like, the government gets involved. Like, the, the FBI has talked to Mark Zuckerberg about, like, misinformation and, and, and stuff that's been posted. Well, that's on, a whole uh, different conversation. Meta now. I guess we can't say Facebook. You know, I'm just and they admitted it to it, right? They admitted yeah, yeah. To misinformation. I'm just going to embrace being drunk on the yeah, podcast dog. now. I'm no longer going to keep trying. Okay, the shirt's bro. coming off I'm soon, just going to so. get even more tanked to be shirt's like, you know, coming. Stevie, you know when you got <laughs> hey. a bitch and she's really <laughs> do fucking it, with you. Real Let's combo. It, you know, you got a bitch that's really fucking with you and then she finds out you make red pill shit and now she's mad. Right, what well, the fuck? We're touching you know? on politics. Did Seems like favor, we're dipping bro. into the, you know, the government a little. Oh, you got your holder question? Yeah, I got a holder question. So as an entrepreneur, our question from comes from Marizi. He says, what is the most important skill slash trait an entrepreneur should acquire in order to be successful bro that's a loaded fucking question, loaded question yeah shout out my easy first told her with cold approach by the way mm. um glad you got this one i'm a little drunk <laughs> <laughs> like, that should have been at the beginning of the podcast question <laughs> i don't know how rogan does this he gets oh, fucked up on his I podcast mean. and still maintains his thought train sorry go ahead i mean I don't know what the most important thing is, man, but the first thing that's coming to my mind is being able to fucking maintain focus on what it is you got you got at hand, bro. It's a lot of distractions. You know what I mean? So would um, you say consistency is one Consistency key? too, but like focus, dog. Like if your ass if it's not working for you, you're gonna just give up. And we were talking about that you earlier mean, with uh, with women kinda interfering with that focus. Yeah, or homies or yep. the fucking game or the fucking family or the or, clubs. Or anything, bro. Especially given how I don't know how old but he is, bro, but like being able to maintain focus on Something I don't know what your entrepreneurship is gonna be based on, but like, it needs to be it needs to consume like ninety eight percent of your fucking <laughs> attention, bro. So kind of stemming off your answer, he also asked, where are the best places to network to find individuals who are on the same path of self improvement and financial success? The mm. Savo House. <laughs> the Savo House. Come playing. Come ahead. on down. Go ahead. Mm. Like hanging at the bar, obviously, is a no. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to have groups around me that. Uh, like people have money so like you know that's what's the saying go like if if you if you got the most money in the room you in the fucking wrong room mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like um but i i don't know i don't know the best way to 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 get to groups like that i think i think i'll help answer that i feel like some of the best ways is like you were you're an athlete in college like being on like a sports team or something where there's a collective body of work towards something so say if you're on like when we're, when we're shooting movies or if you can get around a group of people that have a a, uh, a group goal or like a purpose of, of like not just like hey these are my buddies and we hang out maybe we do cool shit sometimes like if you're with a group of people that are like on a path to a certain goal together that's not a bad place to be I, you know, I, think I got you hold on somebody asked me somebody asked me a similar question it's, it's like if you give me like three things to like you know you're, you're successful now give me give me three words of advice to like put me on the right path I said leave the hoes alone you know and that's number one leave facts. the hoes alone but I mean, it's number one depending on the type of dude you are because most dudes aren't just don't be having hoes. You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> but like even like porn or some shit, right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever, just being attracted by some some estrogen, right? Keep that shit over here. So having a focus, uh, having a purpose, leave the hoes alone, and then the, the group you with. And I think, and I think the group I'm with 
has a lot of fucking influence on me because if they hold me to a standard, I hold them to a standard. You know what I'm saying? You can bounce ideas off of them when there's points of like weakness or vulnerability and shit. You got dudes that you can rely on that they gonna judge you. That you know what I'm saying? Like your homies is like you show me your five best friends. I'm gonna show you your fucking future. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Right. So. Yo, know, purpose, leaving the hoes alone, and having a solid group around you is, I, I feel like, has had a, had a lot of big influence on me. I'll, big piggy, influence on I'll me. piggyback off this. Re, re, reread the question again, just so I make sure I get it right. The question is, from Marizi, he said, where are the best places to network to find individuals who are on the path of self-improvement and financial success and freedom? Okay, so, I know, we live in Connecticut, anybody knows, the Sable Brothers are from Connecticut, and, uh... It's hard to network and even just find like places to film. But my answer to this question is is find the meccas, the hubs of places like New York, mm-hmm. Miami, get Los the fuck Angeles. out of where you're at. Get yeah. yeah, get out from where you're at, but you need to you need to travel and and obviously it, it has to do with your with your circle and the people you have around you. You figure out your 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 bad vices and your good vices and you figure out which ones to keep and you figure out which ones to not keep. But the biggest thing is is just find the the meccas of places or the, the the hubs of places where you can run into a content creator like me and Richie go and do the street interviews and we go to these hot spots where we like New York City Central Park. Now people go out there like business people, celebrities. They go to Central Park, they get some coffee, and they have a meeting in Central Park out there. And then we ran into uh, what, what's his name from The Sopranos? Matt Servino. Matt Servino. We interviewed Matt Servino from The Sopranos. Then we just did. Uh, all gas, no breaks. Who happened to be in New Haven? That was lucky. But yeah, just find find the hubs of places where you know that like you can run into some people of status or, or something like that. He he's a hundred percent right. Like you you take Connecticut. There, there's a lot of Connecticut talent that they want to make it from within Connecticut. And in, in my opinion, you already have an advantage over them if you're prepared to leave and you're go to and you're prepared to go to places where you can actually network. Like Rage did going to Atlanta. Everybody yep. wants to be in Atlanta. Everybody wants to be in Miami. Now, there's more competition out there. But on the same token, you know, I, unfortunately, I know it makes me sound like a hater, but I'm trying to come from a genuine place when I say it. I get invited to come out to Connecticut events all the time, and people tell me, come out and network. They invite me to like, a fucking like Connecticut rap what? battle. Yeah. And what? I'm like, for what? Yeah. Who am I going to network with? But now, however, the difference is you can go out to places where talent is hungry if you're the dude in charge, if you're the dude like me who's directing the films, casting the films, putting the movies together, now I actually got a reason to meet people because it's not about what could these people do for me. It's more about like would they want to collab on something with us because I've met a lot of talent that wasn't doing shit and I'm like, oh, you're not taking the right yep. path but you would be perfect in this role. It benefits them and it benefits me. But if you're going to be in a place like Connecticut, be in a place like the fucking woods of Pennsylvania talking about let's rep the woods of Pennsylvania, you're out of your fucking mm-hmm. mind. Yeah, And I can tie this into a plug too. So we got this. We got this cold approach uh, cologne. Not for sale. Not for sale, but uh, Red Pill Lions collection. It's for our NFT holders. But cold approach, I think it also doesn't have to be confined to just women. Now you got to be good at con- like conducting yourself and speaking with others. It, cold approaching does not just have to be with women. It could be with somebody of status, a celebrity or something, or going, like I said, going to the Mecca, Taking going to the hubs of those places. You, you know the origin of the word? The origin of the word, cold approach, or the term, is cold calling. Cold cold sales. Cold oh, sales, yeah, like some Wolf of Wall Street mean, shit. Yeah. Cold sales means the person coming to try to buy the car from you, if you're a car salesman, wasn't already sold on the car. Actually may just be like browsing. They may not even be thinking about buying the car that day, but the salesman approaches them differently mm-hmm. than someone that's already interested. So, you know, like a chick that's already interested, that's not a cold approach. A, a stranger who you've never spoken to in your life, yeah. having the balls to try to sell her on the fact that you're not a creep, it might be beneficial to fuck with me and the sex might be good within yeah. fucking 30 seconds. Which is a whole different skill though, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because what cold calling and cold approaching is uh not easy to do. It requires motherfuckers get out of the comfort zone. If they're not good at it already, it's only, it's only a small few of people that can fucking pull that off, like not weird and awkward. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, because you're approaching a stranger. Yeah, yeah, even even yeah. correlating like cold approaching to something in financial world, like I feel like the same way with frame. I feel like you need to have frame in finances. People can get too emotional with investments, with business opportunities, and it really rattles their mindset of how they go about it. You got to have frame with finance. Yeah, you have to have frame with finance. You have to have frame with business. Yeah. If people are sizing you up to see what you're about. 
in the in the red pill community, we only talk about how women test you and how women size you up to see what you're about. And everybody wants to know, how do I pass the shit tests? How do I get a woman to know that, like, I'm not to be fucked with, that I'm to be taken serious? You, you got to ask that question and you ain't, that ain't, that ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You got some work to do. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah. what about the way that like a potential business partner is going to size you up, test you to see who is this person made of? Because I can't be doing business with a bitch. I can't be doing business with somebody who's not about something. Yeah. Did you cold approach a lot when you were still uh, single? Uh, or are you yeah. was the type of cat? That nah, just... nah, nah, bro. I, I, as long as I had this in me, I was good to go. <laughs> I was good to go, bro. I was, I was, I was, I was out here. <laughs> you was out here, but I you was, weren't out here. Cold approaching. Were you more like me, like kind of just like talk to the chicks that are in the vicinity versus like the the chick that's on the far end of the bar? Like I'm. No, nah, fucking... bro. I was an animal. I was an. Animal. <laughs> well, elaborate. I was an animal, dog. What I mean, I don't, doing? I don't, I don't know how to. You want like specific events? Like I was an animal. Like craziest when, night. Give when, us when, the craziest when, when, night. When, when motherfuckers knew I retired my jersey, it's like what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he hung up the cleats. Yeah, I, I hung them up, bro. I was a, I was, I was a beast. That's why it's easy for me just to chill and kick back, dogs. I haven't fucking seen it all, done it all, whatever, bro. It's like it's nothing at this point. So what was your twenties like? Uh, Good question. How old are you now? Um, I turned thirty-eight in November. Oh shit! Um, Happy early birthday. Yeah. I'm <laughs> what my twenties like, bro. I've been around the world a few times. You know what I'm saying? You look um, great for 30. I gotta say. Yeah, yeah. I've been around the world a few times. I I, I don't know how dive how deep I can dive into this shit. I want my girl to watch this shit. Bro. <laughs> you can just you can just briefly <laughs> cool, watch it. She cool, man. But like, because we were talking about it a little bit earlier, you're talking about the dynamic of like being on your purpose and then also like hitting your early twenties and getting that experience yeah, out I the way. I didn't, I didn't have my purpose until like. <sighs> Probably when I was focused on this YouTube shit real hard, bro. Because mm-hmm. um, prior to that, I was working and uh, didn't really have no purpose. But I had money. You know what I'm saying? I was in shape. Never had an issue with women. So when I go out, it was never, it's never, it's never a problem. Yeah. But um, like my, I guess my uh, my purpose was back then was women. You know what I'm saying? That had all my attention. How, bro. Like, how, how old were you when you were playing college football? Uh, I was like 19, 19 yeah. to. They don't eighteen to like twenty one, twenty two. What okay. position you play? Outside linebacker. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't. But I wasn't even. I wasn't. I wasn't crazy until I had some money in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? I was pretty. I was. I had a girl all through. I mean, I don't know. I was. A, I was a savage in school too. So because I, I was in a frat. You know what I mean? I played yeah. ball. I had a girl the whole time. Cheated on my girl the whole fucking time I was in school. Were you in one of those frats that like make you like dunk your head in the toilet to like nah, get involved? No, as, no, like, that, would be, that, that would be that would be a white frat. That's white boy shit. Yeah, that's that white boy shit. I was gonna <laughs> Did say. Did you have white friends in school? Is they all yeah. black frats or is it mixed? Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's, it's called um uh yeah HBCUs historically black host, historically black colleges and all the black fraternities and sororities were founded at these historically black colleges. Dog, but like I'm part of my bad. I'm part of a black. Go. I'm part of a black fraternity. Omega Style Five Fraternity Incorporated got the brands and shit. Oh, you on the step team and stuff like that too? Yeah, hopping. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always I, picture um, myself doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we got white boys. <laughs> we do. We got white boys. He's cool like tap me fuck. in. He's with us. Cool man. Don't, fuck, don't steal my filmer. Uh, I, I would <laughs> assume that the the black frats did not make you like strap something to your balls and walk across a fucking field uh, in Kevin, the middle of the night. Kevin shit. says he hates the frats and shit. That's I hate. Do. White we get into that a little frat bit. We didn't do college that wild kids, shit. I cannot stand them. And you know, I'll drive Uber for extra money sometimes to keep this content creation shit going. And if literally you could see the name come up, you know, so when you see the name come up, I'm I'm stereotyping in the reverse way. I see Zach come up. I see like, fucking fuck. Cody come up. I'm like, there is no way. <laughs> Connor I'm like, and Derek. And Cody, yeah. both of them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like, I'm not picking them up. I'm like, there is no way Cody is not a fucking jackass. Like, hey, you Kev, dude. Yeah, I, I got a three. Rack. Would you talk to him? Don't figure it out. You no, I just end now. the fucking thing. I don't. I, I just hit cancel. I don't. I don't pick him up. Cause yo, uh, think about it. When have you, you don't pick them up? Listen, all right. Hell, I'm fucking. Bro. I'm a fucking drunk now. I'm gonna talk my shit. <laughs> Let's Fuck do the it. Comment Let's section. do it. Bro. Okay, it's getting juicy. All right. Here, here's my rant. They say stereotyping is wrong. That's just because it offends people. Stereotyping is usually correct. It's okay to generalize certain people. Like with this example right here. Have you ever heard somebody say, "You know who I can count on more than anybody in this world"? There may be some fuck shit that goes on in this world, but one man I can always count on is fucking Cody. Always to have my back. 
to make the right financial decisions in life, to take care of his family, to be a good man, Cody. Dude. No, you ain't never fucking heard that about Cody because Cody is forever and always the <coughs> so, dude. dude. What the, the fuck, fuck did Cody do to you? Yeah, I know you got some animosity Cody towards Cody, bro. Dude, Cody. I just can't stand those motherfuckers. Like, how can you be such a walking stereotype and when they're in a pack, dude, they just ruin shit dude, everywhere it, they go? Because cause names like that, it's always the privileged kid and the privileged kid can't appreciate shit because he came up with everything. He doesn't appreciate any fucking little thing that comes his way. So, like, Cody He's the dude you hold the door up before, and he's like, yeah. Cody, they, if you're listening, fuck you, man. Fuck you, Cody. <laughs> they, they just ruin shit everywhere they go. And uh, the last time I took one of those Uber rides when I was doing Uber, it, when I was doing Uber, it was fucking four of them in my car. And not for two seconds could they avoid being the living expression of the fucking frat house stereotype. Yeah. I'm listening to this shit from New Haven to Bridgeport. Like, bro, I totally boned a bitch <laughs> i'm like jesus christ like yeah you bone that bitch you fucking I, boned her tony i fucking fucked a bitch on my dirt bike like shut the fuck up like when do you get tired of this shit and why is it that like to go to school and like have a rich dad you also have to be the constant living expression of a fucking moron dude, so everywhere when, when you go. most of those kids when they go to colleges and they go to those weird white frats they don't have an identity coming up with a bunch of money so they just grasp and attach themselves to any identity they can find and that's mm -hmm. the fucking identity they find drinking and beers and football and being like yeah dude that's the whole identity yeah, so I, was, I don't have any experience with any of that Dude. I don't have any. I don't have any animosity towards you, Cody, bro. <laughs> Just know you hey. see a Cody when he's hey. wearing a Vineyard Vine shirt and like, like pastel little white preppy shorts. Shit yeah, Cody's about? one of our one of our NFT holders. You piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not you, Cody. No, not that. The Cody. holders are fine, but not not really. Dude, the be, holders are fine. I'd be throwing people out the Uber. I had I had a couple of kids getting the getting the Uber, and they were like. Ugh. Literally, just like this. They get in. I don't know why they do that. They get in the car. They're like, uh, sup, dude. And I'm like, trying to keep my patience. I'm like, all right, what's up? Three o'clock in the fucking morning here. Let's get it fucking moving. His friends get in. He's like, uh, you, you, want, you want to do some vape risk rip skis, bro? Dude, and I'm like, get out. Because, dude, Everybody that, get that, out. that type of white culture has no style. And not style not even correlating to just how they dress, but just like... They're, they don't they're season their chicken. chicken they, man. Yeah, just they don't get, season just get that their chicken. Uber. Just we'll get that make sure bread, anybody though, who's man. watching this drops a like and subscribes to the Red Pill Lions channel so Kevin doesn't have to deal with these frat fucks on Uber. <laughs> no, it, it's, go, it's, go to it's, Cody's it, Instagram page and put a lion in the it, comments. It, it's horrible. <laughs> and, yo, they make whites like us look bad. They really, really do. Because when you think, like, if you're of another culture, when you think of white men in their 20s, that's what you think of. Oh, like the little white privilege. Fucking like, turn. Yeah. Oh, dude, Bill Burr's stand-up yeah, skit like was Mark. hilarious. He was correlating, no. like, in, in your head. Like, <laughs> he's like, I'm going to name a type of person. And you tell me if you can't picture them in your head. He's like, a, a builder. Like, you picture in your head a builder. He's like, a nanny. You picture the nanny in your head. And he's like... A radical feminist. <laughs> you fix her in your head. He's like, so don't tell me I'm stereotyping. Everyone does it subconsciously. Facts. Subconsciously, yes, everybody does. Yeah. Like I, white I, frat boy. You're like, oh, I can I, picture that. I you don't think when you approach a woman, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but you don't think when you approach a woman, she's not freaking already like judging you in her head the minute you That's walk what up, sucks, the, minute, the way you walk, what you're wearing, what you do, how you conduct yourself. Yeah, those are the same women that are like, you can't judge a book by its cover when all they do is, is judge. And, and yeah, it's just open. Yeah, I said in my book, I, I wrote this chapter uh, about like stereotypical whites in my book and how I don't like being associated with it. And I am not not a stereotypical white because I'm like a white kid that tries to be something other than white. I just also don't have to act like a frat boy fucking knucklehead. I think the biggest thing I don't like about those guys is that they, they carry the, the party life of 19 to 20 years old into 30 to 31 years old sometimes. Yeah. And to me... They're like grown children. Um, but I said in the book, I said, a lot of those white dudes, they get very, very upset when they notice how many white girls are switching over to black guys. And I said in the book, I said, maybe if the way you behaved in front of these fucking girls as they were getting older and starting to be more attracted to a level of maturity and a low key personality, they would have stayed fucking white dudes. But they had to deal with yeah. all growing up being a front row seat to the beer pong table where your shirt's off going like, oh, like this is the coolest shit in the world. And if there was a black dude at the party, he was kicking back with his drink, relaxing and waiting for you to get get tired of this dude's fucking bullshit yeah that's true that's what i said is that the stereotype for like the white guy is the yeah. the, the the college preppy kid 100 percent. you don't think it is I don't, I don't have a stereotype for for i don't know what like the stereotypical white looks like you don't Nah. what I, if when you came up to do the podcast we were like hey how you doing 
Mark Sabo. That's another like, white yeah, stereotype. Yeah, but that's a, that's a stereotype of like that type of white person. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's I, the stereotype. Because I haven't even yeah. ran into that many white guys that you're like that you're describing. You like Kevin Sabo. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like like the like the you know what's up, bro type yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't I haven't I haven't ran into a lot well, of those. Well, ones. yeah, that's actually the stereotype you just mentioned, or the, sorry, the one you just mentioned, the nerdy white guy. That is the white stereotype that the black comedians always did. Richard Pryor, Nettie Murphy, yeah, Cat yeah, Williams. Yeah. That every time th- that's a hysterical white stereotype that every time Richard Pryor impersonated a white person it was like how you doing totally yeah. do like that's another yeah, funny yeah. one we had a Ned Flander like shit can yeah. I segue into another topic yeah, absolutely movies movies top three favorite, favorite movies of all time shoot them <sighs> oh, 300 we gotta do rappers mm. oh, oh yeah, we gotta the, do rappers mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 300 300 that's a great movie Dark Knight mm. Dark I love it's no my surprise Heath Ledger Goodfellas Goodfellas, Goodfellas is my favorite yes, movie of all Joe time Pesci. Joe Pesci's old now, man. He's They're all Dark Knight with Joker or with Bane? Dark Knight with, uh, come on, man. Why so serious? Yeah. But the father. fucking, the, the, the Hawking Phoenix one is hard, too, though. I like, haven't Joker, seen it yet, You still. like that yeah, one? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. We were saying, bro. we were talking about how that's like the story of an incel. It's, but the acting in that shit was it's crazy. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was dark. Like that shit sat on me, bro. It's like a whole different experience in Dark Knight, of course. But yeah, that motherfucker's a bad boy. Phoenix, Joaquin. No, I, I think he did. He did pretty good. I heard he had to eat like he was eating like an apple a day or some shit like that to get that. Like, there are for the some role. actors that really like raise and drop their weight, and that's so unhealthy. You I seen would Christian, do it. Ba- Christian Bale was like really fat in one movie. Dude, and, like, I did it for a movie that later. never got released. So no, I but can dude, like them doing really, really, like really fat, and then like and anorexic skinny all right like, let's get into it those, those are my favorite movies I, they're not the best of all time those are just my favorite yeah yeah, yeah. that's usually I'd how say, we do the rap too <sighs> top three i'd say the casino it's just casino or <laughs> casino <laughs> casino Departed, The Departed, The Departed. <laughs> that, that, one, that, that one does. That one has got so many has fucking done. actors, and it had to be a bad. Oh, oh hell yeah! Shit. I don't know. I it's kind of more recent, but I really liked what was the most recent uh, one with Robert De Niro. Oh, Irishman, The Irishman. The Irishman I really, really I never seen saw it. it. I haven't seen like it either. Three hours. Yeah. 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 Like three it. hour movies are like usually the ones that are the you best. Seen it, Richie? Yeah, I didn't like The Irishman. I didn't see it. I used to like the mic. I used to like to challenge myself to see how long I could last in bed, and I'd put on The Irishman. So if we were halfway through, I knew your boy was fucking. I've been excited to bring up four. I'm trying to fuck for no goddamn two yeah, hours. Yeah, I, I used to have performance anxiety issues. Yeah. I was always challenging myself. Damn. Like, Kevin fucks the Stallone movies. No, I don't. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, actually, yeah. Where Kevin's fucking Rocky's in the background like, Adrian! Absolutely. All right, I've been, uh, I've been excited to bring this up because since I watched your video the other night. um, The Purge. You've seen it? Yeah. Of course, all of them. You're all over the place. Oh, I only saw the first one. We're talking on movies oh, right okay. now. The Purge. I, okay. yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about what's going on uh, January first, twenty twenty three in Chicago? I mean, and this. So he's. What? I, I did a. I did a reaction to. Uh, they call it the Purge Law, and what what they were selling at first is that they're getting rid of cash bail. So everybody that's bailed, everybody that's uh, in jail for these certain amount of crimes. We're gonna get released, and they list they listed these crimes. It was like you know second second degree manslaughter, you know sexual assault, fucking rape, all these types Shit's of things. Real. Get out of Chicago, yeah. If yeah. you're not it's already in, in Chicago, Torsha, she'll yeah. just be out there chilling you with us. Shy Iraq, like you guys but like they, yeah. content, but they were selling it like this, bro. Like they had the fucking mayor of Illinois say it. he listed the fucking crimes that they're gonna let these uh, people out for, and everybody's going crazy. I posted, the, I did a reaction to that video. The video went viral, got like a million views, but then. I got more clarity on what's actually going on. So what they're trying to sell, like this fear factor to everybody, man. It's like misinformation to get people to oppose what the actual law is supposed to do. So they can tweak it. Yeah, what it what it really is is like they're not they're not allowing cash bail anymore. And what it's for is for those people who don't have enough money to bail themselves out, who are sitting in jail, who don't need to be sitting there. Okay. So yeah. really, so really, it's like crimes. Like, all right, you fucking fucking stole a book bag or some shit. You don't need to be sitting in, sitting in fucking jail. Rikers okay. for fucking sitting in Rikers. For, for that but damn three years I, and shit. In your video, I saw you, they listed the, the the type of crimes and they said something along the lines of like, if 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 one of these crimes are called in that like the police force won't go and attend yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah, the, the fucking governor said this shit, bro. But basically what I'm saying, the governor's fucking lying because then I actually licked the fucking, the, the law up the way it was written in the articles they were referring to, bro. And all it, all it is is when a motherfucker is about to go to jail, to put him away, and he's sitting on pretrial or whatever, 
the judge is going to look at the fucking the charge and de- determine whether or not it's worthy for him to be sitting in jail for. And what it also does is you're not allowed to pay cash bail. So say, for instance, it was a severe crime and the motherfucker has money to get himself out on bail. He can't do it no more because you're not allowed to pay for cash bail no more. Okay. So what it does is the motherfuckers who are really supposed to be sitting in jail, they're going to sit in jail. Can't walk. But yeah. what about the people who are able to walk? It's going to be for like crimes that are not as severe as what that initial video so that's told you. not as bad oh, as it was, the it was, original. It was, it was misinformation, though, yeah. bro. Like, that's telling it because they don't want this law to pass for some fucking reason. They want to instill fear is it, into is everybody. Is it already, else. like, written in stone, though, or is it... No, the law's going to pass on January 1st, but but the way they were selling it is not what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Because I, yeah. I was about to say, They called no the purge way. law. They was going to... I, I got to bring the list. That's it was for like, shock value. It was like, it yeah, that. it was like manslaughter, grape, sexual assault... Uh, you know, and, uh, and you're saying these things were allowed on this day, on this you, day. You walk, you walk. No, oh, they, you walk from them. So if you already committed these crimes, you walk. From they were good. No they, reason, that's yeah. what they were selling to you. Okay. Okay. In, initially, that's what the governor said. You saw the video. The governor yeah, saying yep, all yep, this yep, shit, yep, yep, yep. but it's all caps. It's lies. Okay. It's lies. So and then I, what I also found interesting is that when I posted that video, it got a million views with this misinformation, mm-hmm. right? That's that's the, the, the video, my, my long version of the video, like over eight minutes, mm-hmm. eight a million views, that's the long, that's the most views I got in any video on the, on the Night Talk channel, bro. Mm-hmm. Why all of a sudden you gonna give all this fucking video, this information with this misinformation? And then the following, the same day I posted another video providing the facts of it and it got like, you know, 20,000 views. Because it's not as much of a shock value type thing. Misinformation. Source. Misinformation. Mm-hmm. Misinformation that comes to the left, it, when it comes from the left, it always source. Right, misinformation from they want to fuck people. Misinformation sells, man. It sells and it it keeps people like not divided, but like if you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off about some stupid ass topic, they and then most people don't most people don't fucking go and research what the hell's going on. They just go with the headlines. They see their headline readers. Any other person would, because I looked into it too afterwards. But I, I, you did a little more research than me. But even me, just as a viewer, I'm like, okay, I see this, and then but like I dove into like the back end of it. A lot of people just take it for what it is up front. And then not even look into the back end. But I, w- I was excited to ask you about same that question. Shit with, same shit with Andrew Tate. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Nobody looks at both sides of anything. And it's like it's like Mike Tyson uh, took like DMT or like the toad or yeah, some yeah. shit. And uh, he, I I'm forget, trying to do that shit. He might. I, I would like to try it, but I'm so Fuck scared to. that. No, nah, but, but, but Mike <laughs> Bro, Tyson put it like this. No, Mike, I know all about it. Wait, wait. On. Mike Tyson put it like this. He said, would you rather live in the same perspective that you've known like the world today in, in that in that perspective or in the, in the eyes of that or would you rather see it in a whole nother's perspective that you've never even touched on before like Dude, would you rather open your mind weed, like your weed almost broke like my mind so i'm, I'm bro, so I got, I got this dmt story bro somebody told me man they took dmt they were out for like 10 minutes but when he came back he thought he was gone for years he was he was high he fucking got a wife he got married he had kids Rick he and died while he was on his dmt ride came back and he still was connected to what the fuck he went through. And he came back to reality. Like, where's my wife? Where's my kids? I thought I was. Well, how he, much? He was tripping. How much do you know about DMT? I don't know. I know it's like. So do you know what? That d- shit. Apparently <laughs> DMT. It's like you, what you experience when you, when you about to die. Well, yeah. When you it's die, the chemicals it's the, in to- your brain. the chemicals yeah. in your brain, it gets released. And I guess they put it in something where you can consume it. Yeah. And yeah. it's like the same. The same. That's uh, what makes you see the light when you're dying. Yeah. It's DMT. I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to go to the jungle and do that shit. Dude, I hate no. that Joe Rogan made that shit such a cliche that to talk about DMT on a podcast is like, oh, they're doing the DMT podcast oh, thing again. It because fuck. it's such an interesting thing. But in a way, I think that's what life is really like. That's yeah. what scares the shit about me. What you mean? That's what scares the shit out of me about life is I think that that life is just like a dream like that. And then when you die, you wake up and it's like, I, who are all these characters? Like, who are oh, all these dude. people? Like, I, it's... You're only you're only connected to this body by your fucking consciousness, bro, and that's why I feel like when you drink or when you smoke weed, you kind of start to feel like through your visual, like disconnected from your body, and you're like, damn, that literally just a sack of fucking. How do you feel about death? (laughs) Okay, (laughs) we're gonna skim past that question. No, 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 that's a great question. I really want to know, bro. I feel like when you die, it's over. It's over. Me too. That's That's exactly right. You get anxiety about it. Why do y'all think that? Because life is way too fantastic. This is this is it. Just because Kevin's drunk, he feels good now. To me, bro, I just think the brain is extremely powerful. Right, people can fucking manifest and hallucinate the craziest things that come from the fucking brain, dog. You religious at all? Nah, no, me neither. Um, I used to be. I used to be really, really religious. 
I, see, I grew up in a religious house. Religion feels household. like brainwashed, dude. It is. I bro. seen it's it as this. I, well, fucking every kid believes Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny. So when and you remember when I found out that Santa wasn't real, my he mom's friend came a over. Meltdown. My mom's friend came over and she got all drunk and shit. And she was like, "Yeah, guess what? Too Santa ain't real. <laughs> it's your mother." And my whole world crashed. So I was like, oh, "I was like, okay." I was like, "But the Easter Bunny real too?" And they're like, "No." Nope. And then I'm like, "Okay, then the Tooth Fairy's real, right?" And then they're like, "Nah." And then I'm like, "Okay, how about Jesus?" They're like, "No, no, no. no Jesus, Jesus is, is real." real. And I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, you're not gonna tell me that the Easter Bunny, Santa, and the Tooth Fairy." is not real but jesus is real <laughs> you know what that's actually amazing that you had that same experience but uh. it, it sounds funny but one time i was invited on a conspiracy podcast and they asked me the same shit when did you realize that the world was full of shit that the government was lying to you and i said honestly when i was a kid when i found out santa claus wasn't real that was the first time i was like i can be that manipulated that the first time i realized how easy it is to fool the human psyche. I thought a fat dude broke in the house and brought yeah. shit. Most of the times people break in the house, they take shit. But this is a dude that broke in the house and brought shit, and I just accepted that without question. But think, my, but think about how you were taught it, though, bro. That's when, what like, I was about to say. It's overnight, it was like... And look at what comes with it, though. Look at what comes with it. You yeah. believe in this fake thing, and it comes with morals, mm -hmm. reward, punishment. Mm -hmm. Santa ain't going to bring you shit if yeah. you're bad. So it's the same it's shit teaching, with though. religion, government, Dude, with, with the feminist takeover, like everything. That's why when like all the feminists and everyone who has this certain perspective on a certain opinion, like they don't even realize when they're contradicting like someone's argument that like they were just force fed this shit. If, if they told you in school the alphabet started with the letter B and like you just went through life thinking that you will die on a gravestone arguing that point with someone. But Flex. little do you know that you're fucking wrong. But I tell you this much. I, I think that anybody who goes through life certain that there's no afterlife of any kind believes that they're dead certain about life. And I think that that's what no. like I'll, I'll, we're not I'll, dead certain about what this I, even I is. I don't fucking know. I, it's just I, an experience. I would, I would, I would, I would was it agnostic? Like Agnostic. Yeah, agnostic like, is, is about where I'm at. It's saying like, I don't know for sure. Like it could be. I don't have no evidence to fucking tell me that. I think it, religion. It definitely could be, but in, like. But like when a grasshopper dies, is it gonna go to fucking heaven? Gonna exactly. go to hell? Is it I think Jesus the same for fucking thing, bro. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think religion in all, in general, to group it up in one, no matter what kind of religion it may be, I think it's just a, a something that, I think it's just a way for people to have hope. Yeah, it it can be, but but listen, like I'm saying, like. I think it's amazing that people think they're so dead certain about life. Like, maybe this is kind of a stoner discussion. I'm not trying to be like Joe Rogan right now. But one thing that blew my mind is when somebody presented me the scientific evidence that apparently it's a scientifically known fact that the world, the Earth, is 14 billion years old. Did you know that? The world is, the Earth is 14 billion years old. So sometimes... If you smoke a fucking blunt and think about the Earth and the universe. Oh, no, the universe. The universe yeah. is 14 billion years old. So just smoke a blunt and think about the fact that people that are here today who have a 100 or less year lifespan. Like, so someone who generally has, I, I think the last statistic I saw was like men generally die around 76 years old. Jeez. So if you're a male scientist, you generally die around 76 years old. Yep. So you had 76 <laughs> years to figure out what the fuck happened for billion years before you got here and people will say well you're just you're just neglecting the science put that in perspective people alive today are trying to tell us what happened 14 billion years you can't ago. even put that in perspective that's because 14 crazy. billion yeah. years you can't that's that's that. why people are like this is what happens when you die it's just like okay and dan samini got on my case about side. it and dan samini got on my case about rock dating neil degrasse's tyson neil deGrasse explanation tyson. of yeah. uh, how I we all her. got here man and it's just mm -hmm. Like he knows how to fucking say the most advanced shit so simply, man. It's like Good we all based, we all here just because of an accident. Like the stars aligned right, mm -hmm. and the solar system was formed, and you know the Earth had it. Yeah, but my favorite quote was, "You're breathing." My, in the mic. my favorite quote was uh, by Jack Kevorkian because it addresses uh, birth, life, and death, mm -hmm. or creation, life, and death. Most people are just saying that. What? Yeah, most people are just saying that. Ain't nothing happens when you die. Or they have a question about what happens when you die. But Jack Kevorkian said, you don't know for a fact where you came from, where the fuck you even are, or where, where you're you going. going. And at the end of the day, science isn't really going to explain it, and religion isn't really going to explain it. I just think it's interesting sometimes that people think, with our short lifespan here, 
they can adapt to society and the world so quickly that they've convinced themselves they know what this thing is. And that's why sometimes it takes a blunt or some mushrooms or some acid or some DMT, DMT to make you sit back and realize, like, I don't know what I'm really experiencing. But once I adapted to school, work, going to the grocery store and fucking my bitch and watching YouTube, now I think I have a grasp on everything. But, like, once in a blue, you sit back in your own thoughts and you're like, dude, all I know is that I'm looking outside of my eyes. I have five reasons to believe what I'm experiencing right now is even real. Five. Not mm -hmm. 20, not 50, five senses. Yep. And apparently the senses could be manipulated. But then if you think about, when I think about shit like that, like, no one knows shit, bro. We could be fucking sitting here living in simulation. It could be another fucking dimension. That's what the fuck I'm but, talking but about. But I'm saying, but at the end of the day, yeah. does it fucking matter? Because, no, because no, it feels real. Yeah, you know what I'm the saying? The pain like, of it is real. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to make the best of what the situation you have, like, you're in. Like, okay, I know for a certain fact that we are we are all sitting in the motherfucking matrix. Yeah. <laughs> I can't change the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are you supposed to do about it? Yeah, and it, it's also that point of, like, if you don't follow Jesus and God and this religion, then, like, you're going to burn in this devilish hell and all this bad stuff's going to happen when it's like, okay, so if I live the best version of my life, I'm nice to people as much as I can be, and I'd be the best person I can be. If that's not good enough, first off, by the time I get to the end that I don't give a fuck and second off you're telling me that when there's 36 37 million plus I don't know million but there's a lot of other fucking religions so like okay this dude's willing to die in a fucking plane smashing into a wall for all the 40 virgins that come after and there's like a whole many different version of afterlifes when the only thing I know that matters is the people that I love and the people that love me and me in this life on this planet and at the end of the day it might be fucking gone if it goes to black I'm gonna live this life up to to the most the highest ability that I could yeah, I think Damn. it's that was very good. I think I, I think I'll see y'all on the other side and I'll be like, you remember we did that podcast church Meet Jesus. OK, <laughs> well, what first what 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 frustrates me? Not frustrates me, but I'll be thinking about it, the people that are I'm not convicted of anything. I think right, that right. when we're when we're dead, it's a wrap. Lights is off. It's a wrap. But those who are so convicted that this is waiting for them after and you live in your life this way. And when you realize that what you are, what what you believe so tough in is a bunch of bullshit it's like you wasted your fucking time giving this amount of you wasted you wasted so much time giving so much energy to what you believe and there's there's you have no certainty in it yeah and believe you know it. what i'm saying like I, I if, I, if I, I like logically if i was if i was placed place a bet on what possibly what's possibly going to be happening when we're gone like the logical bet was to, to think like when you're gone it's over mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like it's the belief they instilled you but like the chances are it's not going to be that but to be so convicted in it, bro, like... I think the most logical bet is like a recycling of consciousness. I think it's pretty much... No, but listen, I think it's pretty How is much, that logical, though? Well, I think it's pretty much a proven fact that your consciousness and the energy of your body goes back to the universe. So technically, your energy lives after you die. It's just the question of whether or not you're conscious because that's life. Experiencing yeah. an afterlife would be consciousness transcending. Now, in a way... You're, but how can you prove consciousness transcending after you're gone? Like once you're dead, your consciousness is a wrap. How can you prove that it's going somewhere? Do you believe in ghosts, spirits? No. Here, here we no. go. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, but um, some people describe and it. Then, as, and, I gotta get Anthony. And, and, and even even with that though, like if there was an, an existence of ghosts, like are they consciousness? Like what are yeah. what exactly are they evil entities? Like what are they? You know what I'm saying? Like why why does one have to be connected to the other? Well, here here's my only thing with this. And I've always said this to my atheist friends. I've always said I completely understand this perspective. What I don't like is when time and time again throughout life people have phenomenal experiences. It isn't always a ghost and it isn't always a UFO, but phenomenal spiritual experiences. Give me an example. Weird weird synchronist weird synchronistic too drunk for this weird synchronicities i think that's a yes okay. song yeah. uh weird synchronicities precognitive dreams premonitions deja vu say that one. and then spiritual experiences yeah. where they think they've encountered a ghost or something like that and it comes up time and time and time again people have phenomenal stories people have phenomenal near-death experiences and I just don't like the fact that we can't so much as acknowledge that maybe there's not an afterlife, but there is a magical side to life. We're always just no. like those yeah, people yeah. were either tweaking, lying, or on drugs. Yeah, but no, I get that. But I totally agree with that. That's what yeah. I was going to yeah, say. I don't, I, think it, I don't think it has anything to do with this afterlife. I just mm -hmm. think the brain is the brain. The brain is powerful, bro. Like. We don't have, how much brain are you tapped into, like, just doing this right here, like 10% yeah. of it? Yeah, well, but let me say this real quick. This is this is the question that philosophers have on this. 
We're, we've gone into this topic matter because we're drunk, y'all. Just deal with it. <laughs> um, so th- this is this is the question that philosophers have, and it's a fair question. Um, I don't know if you knew this or if either of you knew this. There's three major questions that science still has not solved. They talk okay. enough shit to make you think they've solved it. They still have not proven that consciousness comes from the brain or where it is located in the brain. They don't know where it's located in the brain. No, they'll never they just, know. They just have their assumptions. Yeah. We also still can't prove why we dream like we still don't have an actual answer to why we dream what the purpose of dreams are but so the question dogs dream right well but so so the question that philosophers have is all animals dream right i need that as a sound bite dogs dream the the question that they're trying to come to the bottom of is does consciousness stem from the brain is it born of the brain or is the brain a receiver for consciousness much like a radio picks up a frequency they did this test where they and it's a fair question they had this dude who was dying they weighed his body while he was still alive. I've done that a million times, yeah. Go ahead. Weighed a dead... You've weighed dead people a, a million a, times? No, you I'm said saying you've done they, that no, a million times. Not me, I said they have done that a million oh, times. Okay. They weigh dead people before and after. Me, right? Anyways, they... Uh, yeah, Rocky's like on a morgue doing some Red Pill Lions. Don't like worry about me. I'm, I'm, at nighttime, I don't play hockey. I go to the morgue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they, they took this body of this dude who's dying of cancer. He had like stage four leukemia. Jesus. Um, He's alive. Then he, they weigh his body. Then he dies, and it weighed significantly. I don't know the exact number, but it's significantly less. I've heard that. Uh, then, and they said that that was the soul leaving the body, and that's when the, that's what they say. That's the when people say there's an afterlife, they say the, the the body dies, and you're not in the body, but they always say the soul still stays alive. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know what the fuck to believe. T- 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 it could be from anything. Yeah, you know it could be mean? from shitting. It could be if it could be from anything. Did they? Yo, we shit when we die. Apparently, yeah. Uh, they, I, they may have disproven that one. I'm a little bit more keen to the times that like they were operating. Yeah, but on don't you think if if had if, a good point? If there's there. a body that's sorry, did I cut you off? Yeah, he's a little drunk. I, I'm a little bit more keen to the several hundred different stories of someone who's being operated on. They lost the person um, mid operation, and while they were dead. They knew what was happening in the room. All I'm saying is, I'm not saying you have to take that word and believe it. All I'm saying is, like, hasn't that happened enough for us to go? Maybe there's a little something more to life. I'm not saying you got to be like they're, they're, afterlife. Right, that's, so that's, but saying. when you say more to life, are you specifically referring to the afterlife or just more to us? Just uh, the purpose. Yeah, of being I here. totally think more shit could happen. I don't think it's heaven. I'll give I don't you. Think I'll, it's God, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you this perspective. Happen. So just because there could be an afterlife or not doesn't you look disappointed to me? No, no, no. <laughs> just he be- did do listen, that. Look where he was like this motherfucker. Oh, just because there's an afterlife or not doesn't mean there's necessarily not a, a, a god or whatever while you're alive. But what I'm saying is to a lot of people that like as a human species, what makes people think we even deserve an afterlife? We do a I, lot of okay. fucked All up right. shit. That's I'm not big on that question. Well, I got a better question. My better question is kill what makes three trillion chickens every day to oh, eat them? Fuck the chickens. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> Kevin's like KFC. I'm saying. Remember when Sharifa had chicken, uh, chickens? How annoying was that shit? But I'm saying every fucking animal. All right, all right, all right. But listen, but listen. I'm saying. But I'm, but I'm saying. I'm sorry to do this to you as a guest. But but like <laughs> so. Um, but it was your idea to drink. So fucking. Um, so <laughs> like, um, get the good no, but I think a better question is that what makes us think we deserve an afterlife? Okay, that's the morality yeah. shit. What makes people think that the human brain would be able to comprehend what's beyond space, time, and fucking spirit? Like, if yeah. there is anything. The human brain can only comprehend so much of that. You can only comprehend so much about your own existence. All I'm saying is there's there's questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't sure. I don't like the absolute shutdown uh, of I, questions. Yeah, I'm I don't I don't have an absolute shutdown. I'm just saying I, that's what I think. Yeah. And based of all all the shit I've learned and my rationale about things and how long we've been here, just us existing now, we're like a fucking fucking Anomaly. microscopic. And compared to what took place in our solar system alone, so for it to be, I just don't add up to me. I just think that, <laughs> I just think that we ants, bro. Like we, we're not that. We're not that important. We're not that. We're not that. It's, it's it's not that. It's not that involved. You know what I'm saying? Like dinosaurs was here. Fucking who? We don't even know what's going on in the goddamn ocean, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so much. It's so much shit going on. For for us to be to to be that involved and you know consciousness going here and God here and afterlife there, I just I just think that you know once we're gone, we're gone. So do you believe in the possibility of mermaids? Oh boy, are you pro turtle? 
<laughs> <laughs> because he says we don't know what's going down on in the ocean. I just be. said that like last week. Remember I yeah. said that? Like I thoroughly believe there's like a species of mermaids it, because we haven't discovered be everything. Something. It could be a bunch of shit down the ocean there. Was, you probably fuck one the, 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 the ocean is a whole if different. No, they don't have a vagina. Look like me, I would do the it. The ocean right. is a whole different planet. <laughs> Let me tie this full circle real quick. So just so we can stem into a slightly different topic before we uh, we end this. Um, so pulling this full circle, how he was just kind of saying that like he has his opinion and we can use it in a discussion sense. I feel like a lot of the hate and bullshit on YouTube and Instagram and social media, whether you're making your kind of content or any kind of content or this kind of content, is that a lot of people do not want to listen to someone else's opinion in a form of discussion. It's, all, it's all debate. Facts. I will debate your point. I won't hear what you're saying. Oh, yeah. be like, OK, I get your perspective. Like, you could have easily debated his fucking point. Yeah, like, oh, that's say. not but what I don't you even wanted. think it's debate, though. I, th- I think it's that I'm not trying to hear you. Fuck you. I'm right. You're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Debates make me uncomfortable. It, like, for those of you that can't wrap your head around how to be fucking nice to people on the goddamn internet, that's what a regular discussion looks like. I completely disagree with both these motherfuckers. I will see them in the afterlife. <laughs> I will see y'all. I respect you know your opinion. I, mean? I hope but, there is one. But, but none of it makes me, like angry and yeah. and so it's the same shit with yeah. the red pill stuff with government conspiracy with politics anytime i have a disagreement i keep my mouth shut because for the most part i know most people are not capable of this i don't know why people are so passionate about topics that they'd have to like you want to like would you want to get all tight with yeah. somebody why yeah like, why is that the only thing that i was ever tight and passionate about where i wanted to fucking hit people was these past two years of COVID because it directly affected me. Yeah. That was like your difference of opinion made them strap a mask on my face. My yeah. Life, yeah. Now I was tight. Yeah. And that's basically what pushed me conservative. Like I ordinarily wouldn't consider myself a conservative, but when that was going on, when the conservatives adapted the idea that this is bullshit, I'm like, good, I'm with whoever you thinks this is bullshit. You want to know what kept, and I, may, but sorry. I know hella conservatives that will fucking live and die by that mask too. Really? Man. No yeah. shit. Yeah. So it's, I think it's geographically like from the South, bro. You know what I'm saying? A lot of conservatives was down in the South and live and die by that fucking mask. Old school mentality, bro. Like sheep herd mentality. Yeah, you do what the government fucking says, Follow. bro. Like the yeah. conserv like I think the conservative liberals you're talking about is more of like a younger mind type of thing. The old the old school motherfuckers, they gonna do what the fuck they told. Yeah. What do you think is the one thing that kept COVID going on for as long as it did? Fear. People being sheep? I was gonna sheep say social fear. media. Yep. Social media. So all go fear, sheep, social media, all goes together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Real, real quick, because we we were granted the ability to talk about this again now. Mm-hmm. Two years back, they take you down for talking about it. Oh, it, give, give me good. your yeah. Let me. Uh, but the fact that nobody's fucking pissed off about that shit irritates the fuck out of me. Absolutely. Yeah, Everybody knows. Full, give Give me your full perspective on those past two years, and everybody let them talk on COVID. My persp. I mean. It, I ain't gonna bullshit it. When the when the when the shit first popped off, I'm like, okay, what the fuck about to be in the end of the world? I thought gonna be I thought it was gonna be World War Z. You know what I mean, we fucking packing the damn crib full of food and mm-hmm. all types paper. of shit. You know what I'm saying? And then watching the death stats and all that, bro. But um, you know, becoming more knowledgeable about it, uh, you 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 start to question shit. But I mean, the the pushback from society, pushback from you know, the work. Social media and all that shit, bro. Like I, I was, I definitely had sheep mentality at that point because I didn't know any fucking better, man. And it did, it didn't impact my pockets as well. Like I, I ain't gonna tell nobody what the fuck I do for a living. Yeah. I'm gonna keep that shit off. off right, camera, right, gotcha. But um, um, but knowing, <gasps> but I, I went through like everybody else. I, I, I got to a point where I wasn't, I wasn't scared of it anymore. I'm still, I'm still, I'm getting, I'm, I'm pissed. I gotta wear a mask and shit. Probably like half into the, to the shit. But the shit that irritates me the most is. We're at the point right now where clearly everybody knows the government was clearly everybody knows the government was lying to them about it. Everybody knows that. Like the cats out the bag. Like ain't nobody tripping about it no more. Anybody fucking dying, you know you got played, but nobody's tripping about it. Nobody's saying anything about it. You know what I'm saying? That's what pisses me off the most. Yeah. Dude, that's why they love that TikTok fucking Instagram reel, YouTube reel, attention fucking what, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, your your attention Watch span, time. attention span. Mm. They love that attention span because as soon as they dangle something else in front of your face about abortion, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, and they I'm completely forget the about the other shit. Yeah. Yeah. The left held on to COVID as long as humanly possible, and my experience of it was this, much like yours. It sounds like yours dragged on a little bit longer than mine did. In Cali, me. yeah. For me, the first, oh, because you were in California. Mm. Fuck, they invented COVID. Yeah. Jesus, they invented the <laughs> yeah. restrictions. And they loved it. So, you know, up here in Connecticut is a little bit different. We were a little outside of the bullshit, you know, just an hour outside of New York. Nowhere near California. Nowhere near the most liberal joints. But in California, you thought it was the end of the world. Oh, right, awful. and I'm yeah. sure. So the first two weeks of COVID, I was just as scared as everybody else. I'm not a moron. I don't want to die by the hand of a virus. But 
two weeks later, I know 80 plus people that survived it like a cold. And immediately I'm like, so what the fuck? Yeah. Because they told us this is deadly. It's going to kill everyone. So just like everyone else, they manipulated me into, you remember that first two weeks, anything you touched, you were scared? Dude, I had like yeah. eight bottles of hand fuck? sanitizer and then two weeks that, went by, I that, was like trapping them. It's like creating, <laughs> it's literally like creating a mass psychosis. If there were, if none of this shit ever went on and you knew somebody that they touched something, they went like, oh, uh, you'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with them? But that was happening to all of us. Two weeks in, Rage and I is the first guy we know mm -hmm. that gets COVID. I'm like, holy fuck, he's got eight kids as one of my actors. I'm like, he's scared for his life. Gets through it fine. Went on tour with COVID. Nobody in his fucking tour bus got COVID. And then I know 80. Yeah. And then I know 80 plus people that survived it. And now I'm going, okay. So they lied to us. So from that point on, I dropped it. I never got COVID. I never knew anybody that died from it. Um, that wasn't elderly. I got and COVID didn't. twice. Yeah. And then we all were, and, and okay. Oh, so, so then you take it two years later or you take it to like mid to late 2021. Now it's a regular discussion by mid, uh, by mid to late yeah. 2021. 20, people are getting it and getting through it like a cold. Initially, we were supposed to fear for our lives when we got it. Late 2021, we're like, yeah, I got the vid. And, Dude, and but the amount, I was the, done. The, the I was amount of done impact it. it had on people, though, like their lives, their money, their family. You can't move, you can't travel, you got to close down businesses and all that shit, man. And then, and then now the government fucked y'all. How do you and think it? They it, don't want you to talk about it. How do you it. think it affected, uh, what, what is it, when, uh, Somebody stays in the house a lot. What I'm losing my train Depression? of thought. Depression? Quarantine. 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 No, no, not quarantine. Like an introvert. Yeah. Introverted people. They did. They people that like are whatever. already scared to leave their house to interact with oh. others. And then COVID hits and you give They're them petrified. A, a reason to stay in their house. It just fucking, and, and germaphobes and it too. enables them too. People are already too. scared of this. Yeah, it enables them. Exactly. Enabled and petrified, dude. And they just don't want us to talk about it. And that's the most fucked up part. Every Rogan video where they ever mention COVID, there's a little blue tag on it like, hey, there might be some misinformation about COVID-19. For more research, please click this fucking link. And they don't want to hear anybody else's opinion because they know a lot of it is critical of the government and critical of how they handled it. And a lot of it is going to be just like we like we've been saying, calling shit out like it should be. And they don't want us to be able to call shit out. All right, before we drag this out too long, can I can I change topic real quick? Let's yeah, just do let's whatever just do, it is. Let him talk. Let's just do hey, We've it been eating this him. up. It involves no, him. That's all good. Um, I'm sure your fans talk about your physique. <laughs> <laughs> what? Let's get into uh, it's, it's gym routine. Give gym the boys shit. some muscle yeah, building get, advice. Man, Give them some, some muscle gains, bro. Just eat a lot of butt, dog. <laughs> Eat a lot of butt. God That's damn. not where I thought he was going. <laughs> really thought he was about to say protein. Nah, man. Nah, bro. Like, it, no protein it, that, that and butt. Should, nah. For young men who are trying to better themselves and get in the gym and look good and go meet that girl, go cold approach a woman out at the bar. What 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 advice you, would you give you them to get right in the gym? You can't be lazy though, bro. Like that, that comes with effort. All it is is effort, discipline, and focus, bro. Like I got. Told you, fitness for me, working out for me is like brushing my teeth, putting deodorant on. Same shit. Like if I don't go to the gym, something's wrong. But I, it's a lifestyle. As I say, the lifestyle, it's a lifestyle and the decision. You got to come to a point where you're like, this is either what I'm doing or what yeah. I'm not. You if can't you be half go to the in, gym, would you, would you say it affects you mentally? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, man. Because a lot of people think just going to the gym and working out and getting exercise is just physical, but it's it's oh, more dude, mental it's than anything. Therapy. I know. You two should try it sometime. <laughs> me? I was in the gym more yesterday and today. I know. I got to get you into like muscle, muscle building though. You. You work out like an athlete. But I'm an athlete, Like, yeah. it's just for agility and shit yeah. like that. Yeah, I don't poke myself in the butt. Uh, well, yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Kevin Savo fat shames. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I mean, but a lot of girls like the dad bods these days. At least, at least that's what they shout sell out to them. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No. I, I heard it's trending, bro. Shout out to them. Um, I heard it's trending. Them. Hey, real quick, uh, before we wrap up, uh, this has been fantastic. You got me fucked up. We're having hey, a good time. Hey. Uh, let me ask you. So we're definitely going to get more fucked up after this. Um, So um, let me ask you real quick because this is the majority of our content. Kids watch guys like you, and they, they want your take on you're a disciplined cat, you're in shape. You're successful. You got a good woman. You got a very hot woman. Just had your first kid. Things are good in your life. Um, to, to give your perspective on on uh, dating and becoming high value enough to get women, um, or the reverse end of it, which it seems like you've been touching on, which is like it seems like you are behind the idea that guys shouldn't even fuck with women until they reach a certain status or no. Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't what even. Do you think? I wouldn't even say that though, bro. Just go it's off it's like it. it's like you have to you have to know you. You know what I'm saying? Um. I don't want to fucking I don't want to shit on those who aren't fortunate enough to have experiences with women. But like, if that's not something 
like normal to you, getting attention from him and talking to women and shit. You got to put that much fucking and then, and it shouldn't be do this because of that, right? Like if if you're not getting women, you have no choice other than just to focus on something. Yourself. You know what I'm saying? Focus on yourself, focus on your purpose, focus on whatever the fuck it is going to empower you, make you feel better then. But um the dating world, bro. Like I'm I'm happy that I have a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm happy that I got a girl, bro. Because the shit y'all going through sounds fucking miserable, <laughs> bro. The shit y'all go awful. through sounds fucking miserable. Though. I'm thinking about having this routine, like this, like this situation on my on my channel where I bring in like eligible bachelors who are fucking ready to settle down or or who want like a normal chick. Like, where does somebody go that's ready to fucking kick it with a girl that's worthy of them? And to find that, what steps do you yeah. think you got to take to get to the position where you're ready to settle down, though? But it's different for every fucking man, though, dogs. I don't think every man was as a fucking like a horn dog like me. Like I had to get that shit out of my system to be a, to be the one, the man that I am for my woman now. Like if I didn't get it out of my system, that shit wouldn't fucking work. But every man ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? Some man, all they need is fucking one or two girls their whole life, and they fucking solid. But to actually interact with these women, I think the majority of women today are fucked up. The majority, like eight times out of ten, you're gonna run into a girl that has been impressioned or has been influenced by the feminist movement. It's modern mm-hmm. women there. Like they battling themselves, they 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 a boss bitch, but they want a fucking alpha man. But there's no such thing as that. That dynamic doesn't fucking work. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, uh, and then the whole soft space that men are that the men are in right now. Like society is molding men to fucking be bitches, and they molding bitches to be men. You got to deal with all that mm-hmm. shit, bro. Like, I don't know what the fucking solution is, bro, because every man is fucking different, but. I think the the one thing that men can benefit the most from is finding purpose and try to monetize that purpose. But trying to trying to monetize purpose is very fucking difficult because all purposes don't don't make a lot of money. Yeah. But you need money to fucking survive. To, yeah. And I mean, and and it's and as as fucked up as it sounds, you need money for bitches, right? True. You do. You do. Like the majority, if you can't, if they don't, your 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 role. Like I believe in gender roles. The man's role is to provide stability, um, or provi- uh to represent that in their women's eyes. Like, my mom, my girl makes hella bank. She don't fucking need me for money at all, but she knows that my man got me, mm-hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? And to to, to, to be that, ma- that, ma- that that manly role for a woman, um, I feel like that should be the fucking goal. It's just, you know, being the best version of yourself, being the, the best man as you can, but we in this funky, mo- we in this funky fucking situation where, like, like that's, it seems like it's a dying breed or, like, men are, Men don't have the platform as a voice that shit. Andrew mm-hmm. Tate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, They'll silence you. Yeah, bro. Like, I just, I don't have the, I don't have an answer, bro. It's just, it's, it's all fucked up. You don't got the answer, Sway. What it's do you, all fucked up. What do you, what do you think about the fact that it's kind of generally accepted that everything in a faulty relationship is deemed the man's fault? And the hmm. fact that if you're to go to like couples therapy with your woman, you're generally going to get told that her issue with you that's this big that spiraled into a week-long argument in order to communicate properly you as the man have to entertain that like i think that's what therapists say some to the effect of like it was this big to her but it or it was this big to you but it was that big bro to her. i can give you examples in that Please. shit I, like yeah. yeah men and women are different we know this logical women's emotional even though bitches don't want to say that shit i'm not emotional i'm fucking logical nah fam like me and my woman i have disagreements and she's focused on how she felt about the situation. I'm focused on what the fuck the situation is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did this or she or something happened and, and it made her feel this certain way. So I need to address how the fuck she feel about it. Fuck, like, that's just how she talks. And then she knows now with me, like, I'm focused on what the fuck the situation is. Before we got to the point where we knew, like, how we communicate, it was always this. It's the default. It's always this yeah. because we 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 battling over two certain two different things. Like yeah. I'm mad about what the fuck going on. I'm thinking she's feels differently about what the fuck I think it is, but she's just mad about how she feel about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that goes that, that ties directly in what the fuck you saying because she's what you did means this much to her, but only means this much to you because she's focused on how she felt about it. Women and it being their feelings. Like, yeah, you know what the most fucked up thing I've experienced in my dating life is I'm a very considerate man. All this red pill shit aside, I'm a very considerate man. So when a chick is being emotional, I'm surveilling the situation. I'm looking at why she feels the way she feels, so to speak. I mean, I'm a little too drunk to articulate, articulate this the way I'd like to, but 
um, when, when a chick gets emotional, I, I can assess the situation to see where it's coming from. And a majority of the time you did something that makes her feel insecure. But even being as considerate as I usually am, I, when I'm still met with unli- unlimited yeah. defense, there's only so. It's much hard to console her when she when she's providing heat and friction. Heat and friction, and, and it's different, and, it, and it's different, like woman by woman. Like it seems like white girls, you make them feel insecure. They they cry, carry um, it with sadness, black, and others black, carry it with black anger. Black girls and Puerto Rican girls, you make them feel insecure, and they actually express their insecurities with defenses and press you. And, so, and I, I realize yeah. that dating black girls that people are always just be like, Oh, black girls are, they're just wild and crazy. And, and it, it, no, it's, they express their insecurities in a more masculine way. So it's just not good for argument though, because it, 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 it don't make me defensive. You're not going to talk to me. Oh yeah. You're pissed off. But I, and I, I, my girl ain't black. She come with that type of heat. You know what I'm saying? So I got to the point where she pissed off and I'll take this role in with any girl. Like they feeling the type of way, just fucking relax, give her a hug, kiss her, tell you love her. It's going to fucking calm the shit down and y'all can talk about whatever the fuck it is to talk about. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You got to fucking level the playing field as far as emotion, emotionally, at least. Well, what if you know she's dead wrong though? But, it doesn't, but, 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 but there's no communication as long as y'all yeah. are, you know, in level 10. And when you're heated. And shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, and then yeah. we're the logical ones, right? So, but it, but if, if she's dead wrong, you're going to calm you, her down with giving her, well, it hug, depends giving on, her it a depends, It depends on what she's dead wrong about. You know what I'm saying? Like if she's disrespecting me. Here's yeah. the shit I can't tolerate. Fucking, the shit I can't tolerate is this. I can't tolerate those little issues that like one little thing you did that made her slightly pissed off. And to her, it's this the big. End of the world. Yeah. If I get hit with that more than three times, I leave. Because yeah. I can't actually entertain that. And if, like, a couple's therapist energy. would tell me that, like, well, it's this big to you, but it's that big to her. So you actually need to entertain this small bullshit that's not worth but an she, argument. But she, like, she needs that. to be worth that for you, though. That's yeah. what it is, dog. Yeah. If, she, if, if she's not worth for you going, first of all, a woman that you're going to be with is not going to do no shit like that. Right? The one you take serious, you're not going to deal with no shit like that with her getting pissed off about these little shits. But at the end of the day, like, if you do find a girl that... You, you're willing to fucking put this work in for, then it's gonna be worth it to you. So it's not gonna be a fucking thing. Are you are you talking about the the methods of keeping her defenses in check? Because that's what that is when they're coming at you. The heat, as you describe it, yeah. is her being defensive because she's insecure about yeah. something. Yeah, and that's where the defensiveness comes from. So I'm not saying it's excusable, but I've learned that much. Uh, like the one one black girl I was dating always pressed me, and I just noticed time after time I'm like, you know, because she's so hard, you wouldn't think she's an insecure girl. But then I realized I'm like, she acts hard when I do yeah. something that makes her insecure, and she can't express it. Like the white girl I'm dating who just cries and locks herself in a bathroom, but they're both outbursts of defense in dealing so with insecurities. Let, let me give you let me give you the play how to handle this. Ready? This is what you got to do. So when you're dealing with something where you're the logical standpoint. And she's the emotional standpoint. Emotion, like he was saying, with the level 10, it ties into, like, the amount of friction that's going on. Your logic from this point or 10 minutes from now is going to stay the same. If you give the argument, like, some space, like, whatever, I'm going to go do something, give you some space. If you let it calm down, your point remains the same, but her emotion level kind of comes back down. And then she can hear what the fuck you're saying. If you both are arguing at level 10, she's not hearing a fucking single thing you're saying because her emotions are so fucking through the roof. When you give it a little bit of space. she hears you at level 5, dude. No, not but no, in but general, no, because women. when they when do when they're like, I just I don't, I don't, when they they're like that, dude. Validated, yeah. Man. So, but if you let them just be like, yeah, well, I just don't understand why, and that's a little bit at a different level. But I feel like you can get a little bit through. Too much validation, though. I don't know. It, I think it, that it, can it, lead it, you it, into more it, trouble. No, it depends on the girl, though, bro. Like, I'm not going to give this amount of fucking attention addressing so, how somebody feels if she's not worth it. I'm not, why am I going to go through all this shit if you're some random bitch? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? 100%. Like, like she got to be someone of worth for me a to value. be exhausting my energy and emotions and anger into to, to deal with how the fuck she feels. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could just tell you this much. Uh, I kind of recently in life had the the few kind of girlfriend experiences that I never had because I always did rotations and I always dated randomly and slept around randomly. But when you spend more than a handful of days waking up in the same bed with the girl that you go to bed with, like it's almost like you're living together. Mm -hmm. Now I see what most guys are going through and I would rather jump in front of a fucking train than do it. You wake up, something happens that's that big. It becomes an argument for the rest of the evening. Mm -hmm. And when you're actually trying to be considerate towards the girl's feelings and trying to make it work, you're trying to bring her down from level 10 to level zero 
and this goes on for hours. It's explosive. Then she calms down. You argue. And then once she finally drops the issue, you're so relieved that she's no longer mad that you're laughing and holding hands. And then you're fucking making love. And you feel pathetic that you're so happy she finally calmed down. Then you fucked. Everything's good. You lay your head on the pillow and realize, oh, my God. We're going to do this same tomorrow. shit again tomorrow. That's the wrong I bitch. I would rather That is definitely the wrong, wrong bitch. bitch. But how many dudes are living out relationships like that? Yeah, but they with the wrong bitch. Some and, then like, and then most men are not willing to just fucking let go of fucking regular access to a woman. They cling, especially you know if it's like your like, first. If you, if you, if you, if you, if bitches are easy for you, that's all right, cool. Cut the court with her. But most men don't live in that space. They got somebody that's fucking with them and shit. I'm going to deal with her for most roller coaster as long as I can, you know, have access to this woman. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to wrap up into top five and then wind it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want to hear this. Hey, Stevie Knight, you've been a great guest. Forgive us getting drunk and talking nah, over bro, each other this so was, much. This was my idea, dog. <laughs> yeah, dog. Uh, it, this was cool. I had a good time. So, uh, we'll end it off with this, man. This is Stevie Knight from the Stevie Knight Music React Channel and Night Talk, yeah. uh, which is my personal favorite. Uh, Stevie Knight, who's your top five? Oof. Favorite, and not not best of all in, time. In Favorite what, in what music? Music, yeah, rap. 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 Top five. When you ask someone who's your top five, that just means rap. Yeah, who's top um, five? I have no specific order though. Fuck the order, just uh, Andre three thousand, mm. Lil Wayne, okay, Kendrick Lamar, mm-hmm. Eminem, okay. And that fifth spot is old always, Eminem though, because I don't like always, new Eminem. I just, uh, bro, I'm gonna tell you. Um, this is relatively new to me though, because I told my my fan my my fans this too, or my my subs this too, is that like Eminem is the reason why my fucking YouTube channel popped because I was a black guy who didn't know fucking Eminem, tapped into it and learning what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. But I never really like listened to his shit recreationally because I never fucking vibed with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I made a I made my own because he he released that curtain call two shit his best mm-hmm. hit so I made my own best hits of fucking Eminem bro and then like he <laughs> doing that shit the motherfucker had slaps so um. After after I did that, bro, like I, I realized that I had fuck with him and then dog, and then to me he like he he's uh he's he's definitely a giant in this shit. So Andre Wayne M. Andre three stacks yep. Wayne M. In that fifth spot, probably dog. Who who Drake? Drake really? Yeah. Nas favorite no favorite 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 yeah, yeah favorite bro like Drake don't he he makes the best music. He don't write any of. But I'm saying, I know, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm, I get, no, I know, I get, I get it. But like, he's talented. He, uh, he's in, he's in my regular rotation, bro. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Um, rotation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rock. Go ahead. Uh, my favorite all time: Mac Miller, J Cole, Joy Badass, Tupac, and uh, Big L or Nas, one of the two. Big L. Big L. Yeah, I take That's Big L. Big L. Big L. Big L's I'd, L's I'd say nasty. I'd uh. say Nas, Big L, Method Man, Oof. um, J Cole, Fucking definitely J Cole, dude. <sighs> I have to put Mac in there yes. fifth, fifth on the map. Wow, yours, fifth yours are all like hard spitters. I have the most bizarre top five out of anybody. You're not gonna yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not gonna know any of these motherfuckers. Positive K, mm-hmm. Rapping Forte, Fire. they're just my favorites. J Cole. And then I guess I'm going to say Black Thought. Mm-hmm. Nasty. And Chuck D. Okay. You ever heard Black Thought? Rich, go ahead. Tariq oh, Trotter. Me? Come on. Jada Kiss number one. Mm-hmm. 50 Cent. Mm. Just because of his run with all the albums and mixtapes here, I'm going to say Lil Wayne, Cassidy, and Richie B. <laughs> Rich, come on. <laughs> and Richie B. If I don't think I'm the best, who am I? I'm top okay. five in he's, my it's, listen, He's Richie listen, B. I'm, I'm, my, I'm my fifth spot is always open, bro. I can't think of something. Interchange. Oh, oh, shit, dude. I forgot. Usually people go up to five Cassie, and they like, like, get a sixth in there. Yeah, no, I like, I could, yeah. I, I, Fab is in there. Buster's in there. Yep. But I was thinking about like my favorite, who I listen to the most. And, I like one of my favorite movies 
ever is Chris Rock did the, this movie called Top Five, and everything kept centering back to conversation with friends and family is like the top five. It's it's kind of like the the center of conversation at the barber shop or, amongst, or amongst your boys. Well, saying, if you if you ask me my top five and the top five, they're different lists. Like I have a top five of like who do who raps the best, I, but then like my favorite favorite is different. Is different. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, skill level is different. If I had skill level in there, Ra the Rugged Man would have made the cut. Big L makes the cut. Uh, you know the guys that. But we all. But that's the reason for having a top five is your favorites. Because we know who the most skilled are, yeah. whether you even like in it on the reverse end, whether you even like listening to them or not. Mm-hmm. Like you may never listen to Black Thought, but you know that motherfucker. He's one, one of the, the top of all time. Yeah. He, he, yeah, in my mind, he is the greatest rapper alive. You ever heard Black Thought? Hell yeah, bro. Okay. The fuck? Yeah, yeah. Again, I bet you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Reaction channel. <laughs> you know his real name? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know most of my uh, favorite rappers. You know where Groupie's from? What? The Roots. Oh, yeah, the Roots. Oh, all right. yeah. yeah, come on now. What's Chuck D's real name? Uh, Chuck Reidenhauer. I totally forgot to put fucking Cardi B in my top five. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think yeah, we're going to wrap it yeah, up. I think it's a good, it's a good time yeah, to wrap man. up. Uh, hey, brother, this has been fantastic. Already, we'll do it again sometime. Yes, 100%. Hey, this has been the Red Pill Lions podcast. We didn't get as many questions this time because uh, Stevie Knight is not branded as a Red Pill guy, but he dives into similar topics. Again, we do this podcast as our main utility for our holders. So if you want to become a holder of a Red Pill Lion, when we bring guests to town, your questions are prioritized first. So it would have been a list of questions. Uh, and similar to when we have more people on, you yeah. can always know ahead of time and, and send in your questions. And when we, we dropped the questions like list for him late, so like we didn't have many. But also at the same time, guys, Cold Approach started going out this week. First holders are getting it this week. And then also... Let me grab this real quick. We got these coming out. Here, I'll hold one in. These are fire. These are fire utilities for Vegas, so the holders coming to the Vegas is oh, going to get one, hard. and then we're going to send a bunch of different ones. Um, this one says Savo, but we got a bunch of Tomasi ones and a custom holder one. So, yeah, keep a lookout for that, and, yeah, more utilities coming on the way. Also, keep a lookout for the street interviews. Me and Richie B. run the street interviews. Uh, we just did Andrew Callahan from All Gas, No Breaks. We also interviewed the guy from Sopranos. What's his name again, Richie? Matt Servino. Matt Servino. I always forget his name. But yeah, yeah, next time y'all do one, I'm gonna pull up. Yo, Def, I'd love to have you come do the interview. Oh yeah, absolutely, dude. It's some wild shit. I'll uh, I'll send you a couple videos too if you want to react to them. Let's do it. But yeah, my Instagram is Savo underscore Vlogs, and then my YouTube channel is Savo Vlogs. I'm diving back more into the pranks on that channel, and I'm gonna use the Red Pill Lions for the street interviews on interviewing women on intersexual dynamics. But make sure you find that, like, and subscribe to this video, and whoever wants to take it from there. All right, guys. Thanks. (laughs) Deserve.